The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Celebrate Christmas in July with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get huge savings with $1,776 off a new multi-head ductless system. Visit standardheating.com to discover all the goodies in Santa's bag. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 Beautiful Monday. I hate Mondays. Good morning, everybody. What's today? Today's Monday morning. Back to work. Everybody go back to work because this is a business and we're in the business of being in business and we're doing business. How's vacation? <laughs> Who are you? Your boss? Ah. What's my job again? Accounting. Like a vampire? No, that's account. Exactly. Uh, you do accounting. One, two, three. No, d- just turn on your laptop. Hey, sexy. You want me to take off this t- Stop, stop. Did you forget how to do your job on vacation? I forgot I had a job on vacation. <sighs> Let's Start the show! Oh, Christ. Yeah, you know, eventually the real world is going to come back around and uh, kick you square in the ass. By God, welcome to the 93X half ass Morning Show. Back after a week's vacation. God, it was a beautiful thing all that time off. Sure I didn't was. mind it. I didn't mind it at all. It was a beautiful... It, is everybody here? Everybody's uh, made it back to work? Josh Everybody's has entered alive. the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Present and accounted for. <laughs> Wapples here. I think I see a few of you over there. Yeah, all right. Heard Ashley. Everybody made it back to work. Uh, we hope our wonderful listening audience is doing well. I can tell you Beard Jesus is listening. He said, welcome back, effer nuts. <laughs> not, not a bad way to start. <laughs> I got called an F knuckle the other day, and I cracked up for about oh, I'm gonna well, maybe not that long, about 10, 15 seconds ago. Who gave F you that knuckle. one? A buddy of mine called my, me an F knuckle. My brother uses that now and again, Josh. F knuckle. Uh, yeah. So far, we've been uh, called uh, dildos and butt plugs, but it's all in uh, in welcoming us back. Butt wads, butt munches, goobers. A lot of a lot of <laughs> insults are coming in already. Oh, it feels good. You know, because they're saying, welcome back, buttwads, and welcome back, uh, dildo. I can live with it. I can. Um, we hope our listeners are doing well and that you enjoyed your Independence Day. Josh, I spent my Independence Day in Crosby, Minnesota. Oh, mm. what'd you do up there? Crosby, I said. Uh, wandered around town a little bit, had something or another to eat. Had a few beers. Don't they have that dragon up there? That dragon yeah. statue? The serpent. It's a serpent. serpent. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah, for Serpent Lake. It's cute. It's real cute. I like that thing. Yeah, I spent my uh, 4th of July in Crosby, Minnesota. Did some antiquing, I bet, right? No. Oh. <laughs> no, why? What did I miss? No, uh, I... Just a lot of people go to Crosby for antiquing. Oh, yeah, I didn't I, know that. I'd never heard that before. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, they I got talk. a lot of... A lot of antique shops over there. Oh, that's And sweet. Brainerd, too. I talked to the people in Crosby. They said they've had enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> they've had enough of people swinging in there to look at antiques. Uh, a belated thank you to all the folks who joined us for our last, oh, I guess you'd say our last a real work event before vacation, and that was our uh, boat party on the 28th of June. A hell of a deal Uh, Everyone behaved themselves. Nobody started any trouble as far as I know. Thanks, everyone who came to our our booze cruise. I thought it was great. It was a lot of fun. Very much. A lot of fun. It it was uh, on par with some of the better ones over the years. I thought it wasn't going to happen. And then it did. Well, yeah. It turned out to be a really nice night, too. It did. Well, when we left here today, uh, somebody uh, in management said, yeah, it's probably not going to happen tonight with all the flooding. And when we got down there, certain parts of Shakopee, I guess, were pretty bad. But where we were, it wasn't bad at all. Took out a park bench, street light, a couple of uh, bushes. Flight That's pole. about all I saw. <laughs> everything else was just totally fine. We went through with it, with the booze cruise. And, yeah, I thought everything uh, went just fine. Skis. Uh, so, again, thanks for coming out. A buddy of mine, um, we pre-gamed. We got there really early because we were told, oh, it's awful down there. Even some people were texting in Friday saying it's never going to happen. It's so bad. And so uh, we got there really early. I pr- noticed probably that. about three hours early. I noticed that. I think you texted. Uh, what time did the thing start? Seven o'clock. Seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I swear to God, I'm now we're, we're going back a week and a half here or something like that. But I, I swear to God, you you texted me around four o'clock in the afternoon and said everything's fine down here. Yep, everything was good. <laughs> you were there awful early. Yeah, because people were saying you're not gonna be able to park. You're never, you know, and it wasn't bad at all, not at all. So I'm glad they didn't cancel it or pull the plug on that because. 
that would have been pretty embarrassing. <laughs> that <laughs> now everything's completely <laughs> fine and <laughs> we all chicken out or whatever was about to happen. But it was good. So a buddy of mine that um, came with got obliterated before the boat. That's what I was saying. Like, we got there too early, and it was that was probably a problem. Your friend, uh, do you mind if I say his name out loud? Go ahead. Ben? Yeah. He was a Bitch snips. <laughs> yeah, he... Uh, he didn't uh, seem affected to me at all. He was pretty drunk when huh. we first got on that thing. <laughs> oh, awesome. all right. Good for him. Well, then he, he must have progressively got more drunk. No, he. I think he wanted to sober up because he was driving. Oh. So oh. he just got her done early. And just uh, there are people kind of who relaxed. still go by that uh, that old uh, theory. Uh, makes sense to me. I I grew up with a guy like that. He would drink about oh I don't know fifteen or sixteen beers, and then at the end of the night he'd say, "Yeah, boys, uh, I haven't had anything in about an hour and a half, so I think I'm good to drive." <laughs> <laughs> and we'd say, "Well, wait a minute. No, I don't know if that's a, this is in 1953. You can't just have a couple of." A cups of coffee yeah. at a cafe, and you're good to go. <laughs> I had two waters with yeah, it. Exactly. Well, your 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 pal must be uh, uh, quite an even keel drunk because I didn't notice anything no, different he, about him than uh, when I normally run into the puke. He's pretty good at it. He's huh. got a lot of practice. No kidding. All right, so you guys, you guys got down there early. So yeah, all in all, it was a great event. We got another one of those boat parties coming up in September, I think. I thought it was mm-hmm. October. Is it September? Somewhere around there. Yeah. Sometime we this fall. We better look that up. We got another one. We've been doing. We've been banging out two a year. Oh, you're right. Around. October would be the broadcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Out in, uh, we'll Turtle be in Lake. Wisconsin for October, and then September probably for that. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. We got another chance for you to. I thought the music was a little loud on this year's booze cruise. That'd be will, my one complaint. Yep. I will go ahead and say the music was a little loud. <laughs> it was very loud. A little loud up top, Somebody yeah. brought a skunk, obviously. All I, I kept smelling skunk <laughs> when I went to the top. Yeah. I finally made my way to the top, and it was way too loud. That's when I lost my voice, trying to talk to people on that upper deck. You lost your voice again. Yeah. And I knew it would happen just from, uh, you know, never shutting up. And so I, but I was fine up until that top deck. My God, that I think that was the loudest it's ever been. I, I was trying to talk to people, and I had to kept say, "Sorry, I cannot hear you. Could you say that again?" And yeah. it'd be like four times. And I'm like, God, I feel like a dick. Yeah, after like <laughs> the second time of saying something, I just kind of pretend I know what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You just, just kind of nod. nod. <laughs> I basically made out with a marine's ear. I was just my, I was my tongue, mouth, everything was in his ear, so we could hear each other. Uh. You lost your voice again. That was a good time, though. I was, like I said, it was really fun. Did you guys go out afterwards? No. No, I went no, home. No, went right home. Straight home. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you guys call yourself Rock Station employees. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you go? Home. Oh. I went straight home. He went straight home. Just <laughs> Basically fell asleep on the way home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like a kid dozing off in the car. I was driving. Home. That's the problem. Uh, Got to be careful there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, man. I, yeah, I, I, was, I was pretty exhausted. Yeah, it was a long, uh, a long day, and uh, yeah, we uh, we went straight back to the house. Uh, you know how it goes, uh, Josh, when you take some time to yourself, when you take some time off. I'd I'd love to share a good story or two from from my week off, but either nothing interesting happened, or if something did happen, I can't remember. Yeah, usually I'll make a note or two. Uh, for that very reason, because I know I'll forget. Let's see your notebook. What it's you... completely empty. Empty? Yeah, nothing. I, I had a whole list. I wrote a vacation list. Here's all the things I want to do. And mm. uh, I basically, and a lot of stuff around the house, right, to get to cleaning and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I saved it all for yesterday. I crammed. Oh, I man. Did as much as I could <laughs> yesterday. Thinking, well, we're back at it. Well, before we took time off, I remember you, you made mention of, you know, anytime you get a week... It usually just involves catching up on things around the house. Appointments, and you, things yeah, like that. Dentist appointment, doctor yep. appointment. And you crammed it all into yesterday. I did. It can happen. Oh, 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 I can share something with you. Uh, my friggin' wife. Uh, by damn, we're still together. After, uh, after our week's vacation. I wanted to share with you something she said to me. Um, and, and some of you might be thinking, well, this is what happens when a married couple spends too much time together. You know, I was off work, so I'm home all the time. 
And uh, But that's not really the case here because, you know, she works from home. She's always there. I, uh, you know, I usually, on a regular work day, I get back to the house around, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, um, and while I was on vacation, I was sleeping in till like 9, 9.30. So it wasn't like we had an extraordinary amount of time together during our week off as opposed to a normal week. That's not the case. So I... I don't know what where this came from, but uh, while one day while we were together, uh, while we were away from work, uh, Josh, she threatened me. For what? She threatened me. I can't remember what uh, what how this cut loose. Hmm. What was uh, the threat? The do threat you... was this. Uh, that I do remember. She threatened to stab me. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> uh, That's that very just... Ashley-like. Yeah. <laughs> did she, I mean, did she have a weapon in mind or just like a generic stab? Yes, yes. That, that's the next uh, level to this. She threatened to stab me with five knives. Five? Yes. Do you even own five knives? I believe we do. Oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> uh, okay. So that was, I, I wish I could tell you what I did or said to prompt such a threat. Oh, she, I think I know, actually. What is it? On the boat, you were, quote unquote, threatening to stab a lot of uh, hot mamas. I was. Yeah. I but was. I think you meant something different. I was commenting on <laughs> hot mamas. <laughs> Uh, on the boat. Yeah. And no, that, that couldn't have been it because so much time had gone. This wasn't on the boat. This was days after the... So I was threatened uh, a five-knife stabbing. Uh, here's a, right here, a text. I bet it was... Uh, a text says, referring to the threat, I bet it was whore-related. That was my first I, guess. Right. Yeah. That's no. what I thought. I thought it was... You are like talking about a meat sword and some stabbing and things like that. No, 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 boat. no. Trust me. I, if it was... If I had said something... Or had I done something, I would remember. It was not horror related. <laughs> uh, okay. That's that's one half of, of what happened between me and the friggin' wife while we were on vacation. She did threaten to stab me with five knives. The second half of the story is uh, was a comment that came out of her big fat yapper. She said, uh, she straight up told me that in a few years... I'm going to grow so old and ugly that she won't want to be seen in public with me. <laughs> really? <laughs> Dana's fiance said that about him on the boat. <laughs> she did. <laughs> but she said in about a year. A year? Yeah, it wasn't even plural. I think she even said six months to a year. So that's uh, that's something I can I can give you from our, 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 our week away. I'm trying to think if I felt threatened in any way. You, what, what are you talking uh, about? Over break. Like, oh, you, I oh, want to commiserate with you. I, I didn't. I mean, I was just, yeah, I was directly threatened <laughs> and then told, I guess, I don't know, um, Cubby, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. You tell me. We're, we're, we're best friends. You know, are, are my looks deteriorating to a point where in a few years... I hate to say anything negative about your wife because <laughs> I love your wife <laughs> and I have for decades, but she is insane. Uh, at least about this one topic. She's insane. She says... That that makes no sense whatsoever. In a few years, I'm going to be so elderly and hideous that she won't want to be seen with me. <laughs> so what prompted that? I, again, I don't remember. Dang, I want to know how that came up. I don't remember because my memory is, you know, what it is. <laughs> I don't remember what prompted either one of those friggin' moves on her part. Mean. Mean-spirited. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to do on our break was uh, put some more miles on my bicycle. You, you bought guys... an old school pedal bicycle. I did. No yeah. motor on it, no nothing. Nothing, nothing. So I bought a bike, and uh, you may remember at last check I had 2.3 miles on it. That's the uh, distance from the store to my home. <laughs> and uh, since then, okay, 2.3 miles. Yeah, I'm, st I'm stuck. Still there, huh? Miles. Have you yeah. popped any sick wheelies, though, or anything? Got off a jump? I did try a wheelie uh, maybe after mile one. You okay. Know, when I gained my confidence back, didn't work too well. <laughs> I've never actually owned a mountain bike. And so this is my first. Well, it's like they call it a, I can't remember, crossover or crossbreed. So I that's what you bought. You bought some kind of a mountain bikes. Yeah. And you, so you haven't touched the friggin' thing since you brought it home, whatever, three weeks no. ago. But I have accessorized it. <laughs> nice. Like, with what? Well, I've got a, a water bottle horn. holder. I have a water bottle holder. <laughs> nice. Of course. I, I have a lock, and I installed the uh, lock holder on there. I also have a cell phone holder. 
I was hoping he had a nice little basket on front. <laughs> no, not yet, Dana. <laughs> we got to put another uh, 0.3 miles on there before I do something like that. Well, you know, that's how it happens. Yeah. You know, there are certain purchases. You get excited. You think, well, this is going to be the new me. I and, thought it was uh, something I could do with my youngest. Like you a know? paddle board. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, and biking used to be my entire world. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, but it was a different vibe back then when you had your cool BMX bike and you're right. 12 years old. Yeah, you... we're talking like sixth grade through maybe my sophomore year of high school. Yep. Uh, you and know, he's uh, in sixth grade, or just about to be in seventh grade, so I thought, well, this will be perfect. It usually is outdoor activity equipment that people go out and purchase, and they think, well, this is going to be my new activity. I'm going to whip myself into shape, and then the damn thing just sits in the back. Canoes and silliness like that. Yeah. Well, you still got a couple months of summer to become the next uh, 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 Greg LeMond. I I don't know what I'm talking about. Who was... uh, uh, Lance Armstrong? Brad Armstrong. What was his name? Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Armstrong. Yeah. Yeah, you start juicing like him, too. I did. A couple weeks ago, I was on steroids. You were on steroids. He is on steroids. Yeah. Uh, The roid rage was almost hard to handle. I warned you guys. (laughs) You did. I warned you guys! (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Uh, speaking of bicycles, uh, here's a text from a listener uh, to me. When you were in Crosby, I mentioned I went to Crosby, Minnesota for Independence Day. Uh, they asked me, did you go mountain biking while in Crosby? No, but everybody else did. Oh, yeah? Everybody else in I, town I, I never was, heard that. That's a big thing there? Yeah, yeah. Christ Almighty, there were mountain bikers everywhere. No, I don't get involved in that. Josh, didn't you also rent some super cool car or something, too? Did you do that? Oh, yeah. Well, mm. oh no, that didn't work out. Uh-oh. Oh, dude, canceled on me like two days before. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I, I already I canceled my account on that stupid app. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, dude canceled, uh, and uh, so I thought, well, shoot, I'll try and rent another one. It was too late. Catch me up on this. You were renting a hot rod. Yeah, I was trying to think instead of like you know going to drive somewhere. around on Independence Day. Yeah, I and it was a three day minimum. I'm like, okay, I, that's more than I needed for, but. I rented it for three days, where I thought I did. Uh huh. And uh, like two days before, dude cancels on me. I think he must have got a better offer or something like that. That stinks. Yeah. Or he had so, a hot date. This was a private citizen. Yeah, it's like a, you know, you, a vehicle sharing app. I don't, I don't really know. Like well, you can rent out somebody's car. Oh, I, I, I had some no, people have businesses where they get like a fleet and they'll rent them out. Okay, so almost like a automobile Airbnb. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. So basically, like, you buy a car you most likely can't afford. F me. I, I like n- this one I wanted to drive, yeah. right? And then to help with the payments, you rent it out. Huh. I, I had I had no idea that that was a thing. I really, when you originally told us you were renting a hot rod to try to get some ass on the 4th of July, <laughs> I thought maybe it was from a dealership or no. something. That's, that, that's a drag. Yeah, I was pretty bummed out. I you, just said, all right, I'm done. I'm never doing this You're again. You're never doing it again. Well, Goodbye, I, yeah. You know, Bitch Nips, my buddy we were talking about, he ha- has had a couple bad experiences, but he told me afterwards, he's like, well, I didn't want to ruin your good time, and by letting you know I had <laughs> the two times I used it, it was a nightmare. No, <laughs> dude, let me know. Warning. So I told him, I'm like, you certainly could have told me ahead of time. <laughs> Medical device Jesus texted in, more or less telling me, uh, you know, back to my wife. My friggin' wife, who said in a few years I'm going to be terrible looking and she won't want to be seen with me in public, medical device Jesus basically texted in and said, wanted to correct my wife, I'm going to look more terrible. <laughs> <laughs> more terrible. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Cubby. Yeah, I was looking forward to hearing about that because you showed us pictures of it, the car you were going to rent looks sweet. And I thought uh, you'd be cruising all over the Egan Hans uh, in your new uh, Corvette there. Well, you know what? I uh, So, again, it was something I thought the kids might enjoy. Um, none of them brought it up at all. Nobody remembered. So it was oh, only me. Oh. So, I mean, which was a good thing. I didn't say anything, hoping nobody would bring it up. And luckily, nobody did. So I was talking I'm the only your, one that cared. I was talking to your son on the boat, and he's like, he better let me drive that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess he just forgot about it. Yeah, he forgot. That's oh, funny. played a little pickleball, you know. Oh, you did? Which oh, is always a good enough idea. Enough with the pickleball. <laughs> I, I, I don't do it very often. You know, the big kids wanted to play, and um, it was a, a rainy day, and we played outside. 
And I thought, well, this is a great way to tear an ACL. For <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That How did dangerous. you survive? <laughs> I thought for sure I'm dead. It's I'm time dead to meteor. put those silly pickleball rackets away forever. Enough with the pickleball. What's the worst thing about going back to work after vacation? Who wants it? Ah, uh, you know, psh, nobody cares about this kind of thing, but show prep. Oh, um, mm-hmm. the lack of sleep is one thing. Setting that alarm, turning that alarm back on. Oh, that stinks. Yeah, when you know you're going to, that just hearing that alarm kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. I had one of those nights. I don't think I slept at all. I just kept waking up, looking at my clock. I'm like, all right, four hours to work. Three hours till work. Getting back in your routine. Yeah, yeah. two and a half hours. I had to stop watching House MD, revisiting that show, and I got pretty addicted watching that every night. How far? How far are you? Uh, we just started season five. Now nice. keep in mind, season four there was a writer's strike, so there's only sixteen episodes. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of choke, getting choked up. Yep. You know, pretty constant. It's an emotional show. There's no doubt about that. I didn't remember it being emotional whatsoever when I watched it when it aired, but I'm a changed man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The name of the show again is House. House MD. Yeah, you're talking it, was, about, it was House MD, and now then they changed it to House. You're talking about the old show from like early 2000s, 2005, maybe mid 2000s. You uh, decided to try it for the first time, or you're revisiting it? Revisiting it, so good. Never saw it. I I don't know if it's for you or not. Nah, probably not. It's that like uh, Sherlock Holmes in the medical community. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a great way to put it, dude. Well, yeah, it really is. Yeah. What's his last name? <laughs> what is his last name, Dana? House. Yes. Which is another word for? Holmes. Home. Whole Holmes. Whole Whole Holmes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I see the. I see what uh, oh, the comparison yeah. you're making there. Oh Christ. I watched a few episodes of a program uh, early in our vacation. You want to hear about it? Yeah. It was called <laughs> uh, Worst Roommate Ever. I oh, think. my fiance has been watching that. I, I haven't heard of that. about it. Worst Roommate Ever? That's about, you know, you... You answered an uh, ad in a paper to move in with a str- <laughs> with a stranger, <laughs> and then they kill you, and it, it's just. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I feel sympathy for the people who got tangled up in in situations like this. They needed a roommate. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think of some of the scenarios because we banged out like three episodes in a row on on a on a, on a quiet night. Um, I, I guess I think in some situations it was. Girlfriends and boyfriends, I think. It wasn't just straight up, you know, by the book roommates. In some cases, I think it was girlfriend, boyfriend. Hey, move in with me. We know each other well enough. And it turns out to be horrific stuff. I mean, horrible, murderous. Where I started with this was, obviously, I feel sympathy for these people. You can't help but feel bad for them. But so if some of you have seen the show... The other side of that coin is, how in the hell did you not see the signs from the get-go? <laughs> that, that's what kept punching me in the face while watching the show, where the guy will be like, well, you know, in the first week we lived together, I, I guess, yeah, in the middle of the night, he was walking around the house nude, covered in the blood of a, of a house pet. <laughs> but I just chalked that up to nerves, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. People deserve... I, I'd Second be, chances. Yeah, I'd be hollering at the TV. Well, how the hell did you not think this was going to turn out to be a disaster? The guy was nude, covered in the in the blood of a of a house pet. <laughs> but anyway, so I tried worst roommate ever, and we did three of them, and that's enough for me. Yeah, I think I, just your description. I think I'm good. I like what I hear. Yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, I like to be scared a little bit. You know, I like dark stuff. You know, oh, you that definitely. Uh, I uh, I watched the biography of Sebastian Bach and Sammy Hagar. They, those came out. Anybody watch those? No. no. I don't think I have that channel. Uh, I think you do. To oh, watch. no, you don't anymore, do you? You change providers. Yeah, I don't think I can watch documentaries on Seabass and, uh, and the Red Rocker. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, anybody watch Beverly Hills Cop, the new one? No. Nope. Yeah. What'd you think? That was pretty stupid. Yeah, I, I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I thought it, I, the soundtrack was good. I liked that they revisited, you know, some of the earlier soundtracks. I, uh, But I, I fell asleep, and what I saw it was kind of boring. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, I watched Beverly Hills Cop, uh, the new one, whatever it's called. Uh, uh, Axel Foley. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, that was pretty stupid. 
Yeah, shoot. but it was fun to I, see. I was wondering if I should finish it or not. No, no, don't bother. But uh, I mean, <laughs> overall, it was fun. I like Ed Murphy, uh, Judge Reinhold, yep. the old guy, uh, the other guy, Paul or Riser, whatever. Yep, yeah, they good. revisited some old characters, and that was fine. And and the songs, like you said, but overall, it was uh, it was dumb. I, yeah, I won't watch the rest of it. Hey, I got to fill my time with worst roommate ever. Yeah, you got to get that in you, Josh. My God. I've never really, I'm lucky. I, Well, I've only lived lived with family, with a couple exceptions, I guess, briefly. You know, <laughs> dudes going through divorces and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And I've never, despite trying at least three times, I've never lived alone. But I've never had a, a terrible roommate. Me either. I've had a weird roommate in one of my family members. Well, that was your cousin. Yeah, my, my to be specific on my mom's side, my yeah. But yeah, I, uh, that one was a little goofy, but everyone on my mom's side is, is goofy. That dude gave me the creeps. Yeah, he kind of had that vibe. Oh. It was harmless enough. Sometimes he'd just be looking at me. Yeah, oh. well, that's what he what? does. I didn't like that. And, ah, weird. And, until you uh, it, you see him and you're like, oh, God, he's standing right there. You wonder <laughs> how long it is, and then he just goes, question, and then he'll throw <laughs> something out. <laughs> I hate that question bit. Yeah, me too. <laughs> he did it all the time, yeah. though, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't have to preface it. You know, your inflection at the end of a sentence will indicate to me it's probably a question. Right. <laughs> all right. I oh. will understand that you're looking for a response. Let me tell you one more story about this worst roommate ever uh, friggin' television show. And this will probably go nowhere. Uh, but uh, one of the episodes, here's this lady, nice lady. And she rented out the apartment of her dreams. But then this happened and that happened. Finances, she, something happened. She, uh, she was running out of money. So there you go. She's in a tough spot. She needs to rent out a room or two, right? <laughs> and uh, that sucks. So she rents it out to some dude. He turns out to be a maniac. But this is how bad it got. Uh, the maniacs, he wouldn't pay his rent, right? He became one of these squatters, right? He knew all the laws and everything, and he's not going to pay her a dime. This is my place now. You know, we, we, we hear stories like this all the time. Not a fan of those types no, of people. No, it's, it's disgusting. It, it, it makes my skin crawl to think that there are people out there who want to make that move in life. I'm just going to move in and just, this is, the laws allow me to, God help us, how can you be one of those people? How can you live with yourself? So anyway, this lady... And how is it okay? How does the law say, well, nothing we can do. with The guy did move into your house without your permission. Right. <laughs> That's fair and square. The laws obviously need to be altered. Finders so, keepers. This lady rents one room out to a maniac because she's short on cash. He, he stops paying rent almost immediately. So she's, she's so desperate, so desperate. She, rent, she didn't have any other rooms to rent. She allowed someone... To live in her apartment in a tent in the middle of the living room. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. That, that is horrible. <laughs> and who is the person with the tent? <laughs> yeah, what's, what's that person's story? Yeah. They made a phone call and said, Yeah, you got a room for rent? No. Oh, you don't? Oh, because the ad said, well, I do have a room, but a maniac is in there now, and he's not paying the rent. <laughs> well, you got anywhere I can go? Well, you can put a tent in the middle of my living room. And li and the lady even said she'd unzip the tent. And the hey, good morning. How are you? Uh, and, and where's your rent money? Living in a... That's pretty awesome. <laughs> tent in the living room. Uh, <laughs> you had to be there for that. All right. Uh... 7.30, the newly retired Randy Shaver will be with us, along with Brad Ryder. Brad is still a member of America's workforce, as far as I know. Yeah, uh, Randy, retirement Randy, what will we get? Uh, That's a good question. He acknowledged 93X on his Facebook page, I was told. Oh, we're all supposed to touch ourselves over that yeah, now. Yeah, we can. Now he's he's full on uh, a member of the show. He owes us. <laughs> he owes us, doesn't he, Josh? It's his one and only uh, job at this point. Uh, oh, did he acknowledge us on Facebook? Well, lucky us. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still going to be a stiff. That's what I think. You think so? I think retired Randy is still going to be aggravating for the most part. But he'll be joining us. He's on the road, Summers. That's what I was told yesterday, yeah. He's on va he, He's on a permanent he's vacation. Running right around he, uh, on a road trip. He loves those road trips. So he I guess does. he's doing something Until like that. Until the car crashes happen. Yeah, he still likes <laughs> it, believe yeah. it or not. It took out his dream car. 
Randy Shaver, I Brad Ryder. I tried to rent my dream car over the weekend. Didn't work <laughs> out so well. Dr. P. Jesus. That'll also. be good to see him. Yeah, going to join us later on this morning, 8.20, 8.30. I don't even know. Who cares? First day back. <laughs> we got to take a break. We'll be with you here in a few minutes on the half Fast Morning Show. The 93X half Fast Morning Show. Are you ready to beat the heat this summer? Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is here to help you say goodbye to sweltering heat and hello to ultimate comfort. Ashley, what specials do they have going on this month? Celebrate Christmas in July with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get huge savings with $1,776 off a new multi-head ductless system. Visit standardheating.com to discover all the goodies in Santa's bag. You met Lala Kent on Vanderpump Rules. Now Lala and her friends share everything on Give Them Lala. Ocean now knows the name of the baby. No Amazon lines Make for that imprompt- one. No, no, no. no. She's going to leak it. Oh, if she tries to, I'm not letting her because she will leak the name. Yeah, and she says it. She goes, this would look so great for baby S. <laughs> Little baby Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah. People are still guessing. The most recent was Stone. Oh, that's the name of my son. Stone. 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 Watch what Lala is talking about on YouTube or search for Give Them Lala wherever you listen. Stupid news on the half-assed morning show. Oh, man. You know, our listening audience is special. We try to tell them that as often as we can, how much we appreciate them, the brother and sisterhood. You know what I think is special about them, Cubby? They support each other, and they support us. I like that as well. When we're in need, and we certainly like to support our listeners as much as possible. It's, you know, I don't know. So many people are are only in it for themselves, and uh, you see a lot of a lot of camaraderie, a lot of uh, unity amongst the brother and sisterhood. Here's what I mean. I was telling you earlier about my friggin' wife. I, I get so aggravated uh, while we were on vacation. She threatened me. And it was a pretty serious threat. She threatened to stab me with five knives in the home, Josh, that we share together. (laughs) You've lived there a while. It was your home before it became her home. Oh, it absolutely was my... I don't remember what I said, but next thing you know, I'm being threatened. I, You know what? I just realized I was picturing it all at once. Like she taped them onto her hands like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I didn't realize she could like go one knife to another knife and then so on and so on. Oh, that's what I was thinking too. I'm Josh. not sure how she put it together, how the plan was put together in her in her in her head. Well, now I but need to know. Because we all support each other around here. Subaru parts Jesus texted in to make me feel better about the situation. He said uh, his wife threatens to stab him all the time. (laughs) He's been married 21 years, and he says, I'm still here. You'll be fine. (laughs) There's a lot of empty threats in marriage, he said. A lot of (laughs) empty threats. Yeah. It's good to have support like that. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I appreciate that. And Subaru parts Jesus, you run into some kind of trouble, text me. I'll, I'll try to help you out. You bet. Straighten you out one way or the other if I can. Yeah, you guys could commiserate. Yeah. You know, and then uh, also it would be really nice if he ends up in an ER somewhere if he gives you a quick text going, I was wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes those threats aren't as empty as I'd like. Get out! (laughs) Uh, We want to send some support to Pickle Rick. I guess Mama Pickle Rick is in the hospital. And uh, they were looking for some thoughts and prayers from the Brotherhood. Hope she does okay. Mm, that's never fun to hear about. Hey, uh, Subaru Parts Jesus. Speaking of our wives, how about a little, uh, little swappy swap, baby? <laughs> huh? Huh? Text me on that. Because we're... Uh, Do you think that might have... We're not afraid. Threat? Huh? That might have been the threat. Did you bring up a wife swap or something? Don't think so. If it was something like that, like earlier, someone guessed it must have been whore-related that uh, I was threatened in such a way because my wife has a thing about whores. Um, she hates If it was something like that, Josh, I would have remembered. It was something real simple, like, uh, you know, I'm going to move your car out of the garage for a couple. It was something silly. <laughs> and she said, if you do that, I will stab you with five Five, knives. yes. She's awesome. She's awesome is a comment that I heard from Ash. I support that. <sighs> Stabbing innocent people <laughs> five times. I don't know. Five I don't knives. Know if he's innocent. 
<laughs> Let's try our first stupid news report in a while. Let's see if this bit still works. Uh, if we didn't say it already, we hope everyone and all of y'all had a glorious Independence Day. We hope you still have all the digits hanging off of you that you did going into this year's celebration. That includes peckers, uh, nuts, nipples, all the important things. Yeah, I like all those, and I want them to all stay attached. I do think a couple of my neighbors are having a who has better access to explosives fight oh. the last mm. couple of weeks. Same here. So, I mean, like, we're talking window shattering stuff. These are the most powerful fireworks I've heard in the neighborhood in a long, long time. That's how, fun. How do your dogs feel about it? They, they're too, too dumb to get scared. Oh, oh really? Well, that's, yeah, that's good, good, at least. Mm-hmm. We're lucky in that way. That's fun when someone in the neighborhood brings out the big guns, baby. Yeah. Now, if you were to walk your dog by our house, they will go absolutely insane. But yeah, if there's some fireworks going on or whatever, our, the fireworks, the, the two we were going to go to were both canceled. You guys experienced yeah, that? Yeah, same here. It was a bummer, but I, I get uh, it. I didn't get myself lined up to see any kind of fireworks this year, but I understand, yeah, a lot of it was canceled because of the weather. Yeah, thunderstorms. I, I put on a little light show in the house, you know, so we could have... Something going on, but what, you you put a light show on in the house. I have colored lights in the house, and so we just did a little flickering uh, light show. Yeah, oh, a rave and didn't invite us. Well, I didn't think you liked raves. <laughs> uh, I've never been invited to one. <laughs> Nick's wife doesn't like raves because all the whores. There are yeah. whores at raves. <laughs> it would be terrific if one day we could be sure that everybody was going to come away from the 4th of July in one piece. But fireworks and certain people just aren't a good mix. A fella down there in, how do I say this again, South Carolina, he about blew his own head smooth off his shoulders. He decided to put a lit firework of some sort up on top of his head at a 4th of July party and it killed him dead. <sighs> when the cops rolled up to a neighborhood beer party at around 10.30 at night on the 4th, they found the dude laid out in the road with a hole in his cranium. Can you imagine? <laughs> Just being the people around and uh, watch that happen. I don't, did you get, I don't know how much you anybody read on this story, but for whatever reason, there was a couple of you know, news organizations that talked about the cleanup and oh, how nice. bad it was. Like just to maybe just trying to shock people into don't put a, don't put on a top hat and then a firework and show off to your friends. Maybe that's why. To mention the the cleanup, to mention vacuuming up brains and whatnot, yeah. it seems unnecessary. I thought so too. Goes without Real saying. Far. Witnesses told the cops that this guy just blowed himself up. The poor bastard went by the name of Alan McGrew. He was 41 years old. Folks said, Josh just mentioned it. Folks said he was wearing uh, himself a, a large top hat. I'm guessing it was a Uncle That's a good enough comedy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, cool. I, I bet it was an Uncle Sam type of a thing. You know, yay. That's what oh, I'm picturing. Yeah, yeah. America. You know how folks love yeah. that bit. America. They do. He was wearing a large top hat. He put the firework ski on top top of the top hat and then he lit her up and kablooey he was a goner the poor guy's wife was there she had to watch that she even told the cops when the cops were asking her out she even told the cops she said he was trying to show off says here uh, family members and friends at this beer party tried to get him to knock it off. You know, no, 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 don't do that. No, what was his name again? Alan. Come on, Al. Put it down. Now, Al, Al! But the damn thing blew, and it just straight up knocked his block off. That's one way to meet your maker, I guess. Oh, right there. It's terrible. Jesus. Only balls. 41 years old, too. Ah, come on, man. I had a buddy that, uh, his, I think it was four fingers ended up in a different county. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> they reattached one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a buddy of my dad's, when we were kids, he blew his fingers into the neighbor's yard. Yeah. With a f- Wait, was it the same type of thing? Like, oh, it's a dud. I'm just going to go pick this up. Bang! Kablooey! Exactly. Idiot. Same same thing? Exactly. 
cops came, right? And my dad's buddy still is hiding his hand because the cops showed up. Hey, who's got the hardcore firework? My dad's buddy is hiding his hand behind his back. <laughs> oh, it wasn't us. It wasn't Blood us. Blood dripping. Blood <laughs> yeah. pouring. You should be showing your hand to the cop and saying, "Call an ambulance." Instead, he don't want. He doesn't want the fine or whatever. His fingers are gone. No, no, it wasn't us. Oh, so gross, <laughs> dude. You have to go to the hospital. Yeah. That's what about 31 Howensteins will do for you on Independence Day 1977. Some of you right now are going, oh, Jesus, yeah, my dad and my grandpa drank Howenstein. Some of you are saying, what the hell is Howenstein? <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing. Oh, those, uh, Josh, those uh, social media videos. They go round and round. They do. Uh, one of the latest is a video of a group of young fellas uh, on a boat. I'm not going to say out loud where they were, but I'm sure you'll be able to <laughs> take a guess. So one guy, a bunch of guys on a boat, one guy hangs over the edge of the boat with a can of beer in his hand. An alligator pops on up out of the water. And when the gator opens its yap, the dude uses the gator's teeth to crack open his Steve Weiser. Okay, that's pretty yeah! sweet. It was kind of impressive. And then he they must cut... have done that before. Oh, there was there was a, a game plan. I think. Yeah. It, it, as far as you can game plan with a a wild alligator, there was something going. And then, of course, as you heard, they cut loose with the high fives and the "Let's go" routine, and the dude drinks the beer. My guess is, here's my guess, with my limited experiences with alligators. They were feeding this damn thing. And every damn thing, uh, every damn time it pops up out of the water, you know, it opens its yap for you to throw a marshmallow. And that's what I learned when I spent some time down on the bayou. Alligators like marshmallows. <laughs> that's adorable. We went on a bayou tour in these rickety-ass old canoes. And the whole time I'm thinking, well, I'm going to die, Right. I'm going to fall out of this canoe, and the alligators are going to kill me. I was a little nervous, so we're paddling out, and they gave us a big bag of marshmallows, like we were going to a, a s'more uh, competition or some big bag of mar. And they said, alligators will eat the... So we threw them over the side of the boat, and it was, after a while, it was almost like throwing a treat to a dog. These alligators on this bayou tour were so used to people throwing them marshmallows, they, they would come up to the water and just open their yaps because they knew you'd have some. So that might have been how these guys perfected this opening up a can of beer with a gator's yapper. Yeah, the alligators seem pretty open to the idea. Yeah. I just threw away some marshmallows yesterday. I had no idea I could have fed, <laughs> fed an alligator. Oh, the alligators to, are going hungry today now. No clue. No down clue. to Louisiana, Josh. You could have head down there. And... <laughs> so anyway, this is a, a massive video. Obviously, it looks like a great way to have an arm pulled off of you, but, you know, these guys are a bunch of young hard-ons, so they're willing to risk it all to be internet famous. Using an alligator to open a can of beer. Is anyone anticipating a, a run of horrible deaths in the next few days from dudes trying to top this bit? Uh, yeah, at least, you know, at least a couple, yeah. Yeah. There could be some, you know, 20-year-old dies... Uh, it could be some headlines like 20-year-old dies trying to uh, uh, use a live grizzly bear to uh, wipe his ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wouldn't be a bad... If I was trying to think of an animal I'd like to wipe my butt with, a grizzly bear, I mean, aside from the obvious danger. Do you have problems with poop sticking to your fur? Not too often, no. That's that old joke. Remember the joke about the bear and the <laughs> rabbit? Yeah, yeah. And then the bear picks up the rabbit and he wipes his butt. Has anyone here opened a beer in a creative way? No. Nah, I've no, never tried any of that uh, kind of stuff. I mean, of course, you got, you know. Stabbing it with something? or Yeah, I mean. Yeah, five just knives, shotgunning. Maybe. Using a screw on the side of the. Uh, nothing. Nothing uh, worth nothing talking exotic, about. Nothing exotic? No. Nothing that's going to make you an internet star? No. no. Those people that do it with their teeth freak me out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a girl in high school that that was like her gimmick. She would do that every party. And a, a girl? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, wow, that's pretty impressive. My mm -hmm. teeth would end up in the beer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No way that would hurt. work. 
All right, uh, here's something that's a little closer to home, a little more of a Midwestern vibe to it. The cops in F me run in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Hmm. I've been there. Mm-hmm. I bet we all have. Quite a few times. Well, that is... Those are great stories, guys. Thank you. They <laughs> really are. <laughs> Dynamite drop-in. Yep, yep. That's how you do it right yep, there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cops in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. They're on the lookout for someone who aggressively threw cheese at someone else's car. Oh, I'd like a drop-in here. I've had cheese. <laughs> I've consumed cheese. You're kidding me. No, I, I have. Yeah. I've probably had some in Eau Claire, actually. I'm tying it all together here. Someone aggressively remember, threw cheese at someone else's car. Man, police work can really be fascinating at times, huh? Yeah, slow day, I guess. So a few nights ago, the cops posted a message up on Facebook or one of those deals. They said, last night we responded to what might have been the most Wisconsin complaint ever, is how they said it. The cops got a call from someone in a motor vehicle. They said that someone had been chasing them down. And then the caller told the cops that the person threw cheese at their vehicle. The only thing I've ever had thrown at my vehicle was a bicycle, and that was in our parking lot at about 3 in the morning. Somebody threw a bike at my car. Threw yeah, a bike right they at threw car. a bicycle at your car. Yeah. You guys, anybody here outside of, like, water mm, balloons no. or snowballs or no, anything? No, no, no. That I can't think of it. so a... irrationally angry. Oh, somebody threw a rock from an overpass on uh, Highway 62. That was pretty cool. <laughs> nah, that's, that's not cool. I had a buddy that worked at Brugger's Bagels, and at the end of the shift, they would have leftover bagels. So we'd always have a bunch of bagels. We would go around throwing bagels at cars. You know what? I've, I've I been. wish I, if you took a shot every time you said bagels, you'd be drunk. Yep. As, <laughs> <laughs> in such a short amount of time. We were those uh, rock-throwing overpass kids. Really? I yeah. think you guys are smarter than that. Rocks, even. Until one of our buddies you know, really mangled somebody. Not meaning he killed a driver. He mangled the car pretty badly, and, and it scared the piss out of me. It did. How I didn't anticipate you know, the possible end results beforehand. Sometimes when uh, you're a young person, you don't think too far ahead. No, exactly. You, we needed, uh, I needed at least, I needed to see how much damage we could really do before I told myself, okay, I want no part of it. And, and you know the story about us throwing rocks at the beach when we were kids and I hit some lady in the forehead. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, it was just, yeah, water balloons and snowballs for us. I don't know if anyone's ever thrown anything at me. I can't think. Uh, so here we go. So, the cops got up on Facebook, talked about this cheese assault. They called it the most Wisconsin complaint ever. And then here come the puns. The cops said, furthermore, in their message on Facebook, uh, do you want to read this, Josh? Well, you know, you know where they're going, you right? Know, you know, if I, you re- I read the headline, and it said, you know, the cops were being cute, and I knew they were going to put Gouda in there. You know how much I hate this. I knew they'd put Nacho in there. Yeah. But they did surprise me with Brie. Maybe because Brie is too fancy for me. All right, I'll dump it on you. Not Gouda, said the cops. It's unbelievable that someone <laughs> would do this. Throwing cheese is Nacho best look. And then regular folks had to show their pun skills when commenting, and this gets really bad, no throwing sharp objects. That's a Swiss demeanor. <laughs> no, don't laugh. Oh, sorry. I like that one. No way, someone else commented. Imagine cheese flying pasteurized. While driving. Ah, <laughs> uh, those were terrible. Yeah, those suck. I like the pasteurized one. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like it. Too cheesy. Uh-huh. Someone said there was a TikTok challenge a few years ago that involved cheesing cars. It's not clear if that had anything to do with this. Mm, there was a rumor that. for a while that if you walked out, uh, you know, specifically women, if you saw a piece of cheese on your car, that meant you were a target for a kidnapping. Do you guys remember that? 
That was going around social oh, media no. for a Oh, yes, I do. A target for a kidnapping? <laughs> yeah. What the <laughs> hell is that? No, I really hope this has never happened. I take this as ridiculous, and it's untrue. But is that you, like if I flash my brights at a car they'll uh, shoot and kill in, you? in Minneapolis, they'll yeah. kill me? Yeah. I believe that. When I was a new driver and I grew up in Minneapolis, people would always say, hey, if, uh, if somebody's brights are on or their lights are off, Never acknowledge it because they'll shoot and kill you. That's a gang initiation. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. God. Those stories went around my neighborhood, too. Hey, we're going down to First Avenue tonight for the concert. Well, don't flash your brights at anybody whose lights are off. The gangs will kill you. <laughs> that story. The other one was, oh, you better never wear an L.A. Kings hat if you're in Minneapolis. They'll kill you. <laughs> well, I will say a buddy of mine had a knife pulled on him for his L.A. Kings starter jacket. You lost that one. Yeah, well, those were a big deal those, back in the they day. Were. Dude, I was joking around one night at First Avenue. We were seniors in high school. I think we went to go see Ace Fraley of Kiss play at first at March 15th, 1990. You can look it up. It was a great show. I threw my hat on stage. Ace Fraley put it on his head and then gave it back to me. Anyway, we were at First Avenue, 1990, to see Ace Fraley. And I'm joking around. One of my buddies walks into the concert, into the into the joint there, first half. He's wearing his L.A. Kings hat. And I said, are you crazy wearing that hat in Minneapolis? And he was like, oh, my God. And he put it in his palm. I'm like, it's a joke, you friggin'. <laughs> Wyatt texted in and said, whoever's throwing that cheese at cars is a real monster. <laughs> I like that one. Uh... I didn't see that one coming. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. This isn't over yet. This isn't the first time cheese made the news here in the Midwest lately. A few weeks ago, a TikTok, again with the TikTok videos, a video showed a Michigan man helping a raccoon that appeared to be choking on a piece of cheese. Did anyone see that video? Yeah, how do you choke on some cheese? It's ridiculous. Oh, I suppose if you eat it in chunks. I, yeah. I, I like mine in slices. Yeah you, yeah, you saw the video? Yeah. Was it adorable? Oh, you know, it's kind of cute watching a raccoon asphyxiate. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds crazy. So the story is a bunch of dudes are sitting around a campfire like, uh, like they do in Michigan. They had some food sitting around. A raccoon comes uh, waddling up. He grabs a piece of cheese, and then the son bitch, ah, ah, he's choking on it. And the dude got up uh, from the campfire and pounded on the raccoon's uh, chest until it spit up the cheese. Betrayed by the cheese. Would you still, I mean, Ashley, you're the biggest cheese fan I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Uh, you used to carry around purse cheese. Yes. Would you, you, if you choked on it, you wouldn't give it up, right? Never, never, no. Oh, that's one of the, <laughs> the saddest things when people share with me that they're lactose intolerant. Oh. I can't fathom it. I'm just like, oh. Your life must be awful. How do you even get up every day? <laughs> I had a scary incident with a mozzarella stick, and then it never stopped me from going back to it. So where kind of like half of the piece of the mozzarella stick like went down my throat, the other half was still stuck up, you know, in my mouth. So it was kind of I was caught in that in between moment for a few seconds there, and uh, I still finished the plate of mozzarella sticks, even though I almost died. That's scary. Uh, were you deep throating it? I'm trying to figure out how that happens. It was, you know, it was, so, it was such gooey cheese, and it just it strung out, and half of it was kind of started going down my throat. The other half, oh, yuck. <laughs> yeah, I know, Stop it was it. not ideal. Uh, that's disgusting. Is this true? Door swinging truck driver Jesus says. If you throw cheese at a crying baby, it makes them stop. <laughs> oh, I'd see those. Videos. Oh, yeah, the people cheesing their babies. Yeah. <laughs> was that pretty big? Not yeah. just a yeah. few months ago or something like that. Yeah, was, Wait you, a minute, what are we talking about? There was you, another viral thing. Oh, with the viral thing. You throw a craft single at your baby and it just lands on their head. <laughs> We it, to, it, it, it sticks to their... Oh, oh, so you stick it on top of their head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's you, funny. You whip it at them. Uh-huh. Yeah, we oh, used to oh, do yeah. that in the kitchen all the time. You'd put a little bit of soap, too, so it really gets things to stick. And then you would just <laughs> walk up next to someone, slap them in the face with it, and it sticks there. <laughs> uh, you've been cheesed. Did yep. you say anything? Say cheese or something cool before you do it? <laughs> no, I was not that cool. Oh. I wish I could have thought of that. All right, this here... This year is just how it is. Some folks like to cuddle. Others want nothing to do with it. Where do you stand? Cuddlers, let me hear you. I love cuddling. I, I'm not much of a cuddler. Every once in a while, maybe I get in the mood. 
Non-cuddlers, sound off. That's me. Me. Take that cuddle and put it in the trash can. Mm -hmm. I'll take it off. I want to be cuddled every single moment of the day. I'm not a seventh grader anymore. I don't need to cuddle anything. (laughs) I love my cuddles. Not the cuttlefish. What about with your dog or cat? Oh, dog cuddles are the best cuddles. Yeah, they get the best cuddles. An exception to the rule. I wasn't even considering house pets. Oh, hell yeah. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll wrap myself around that dog or cat and we'll nap for hours. I was thinking of human beings, and I'm not not dialed into cuddling with human beings. So there is an exception as long as it's a pet. House pets, yeah, sure. Yeah, Mano loves to cuddle. Now that's your your cat. Yep, she goes underneath the covers now and loves to be right next to my chest. It's great. A few days ago. Now here's a gal willing to go to jail over cuddling, or, or lack thereof, I guess. A few days ago, a gal got herself arrested for domestic battery. She upped and beat her boyfriend upside the head because she wanted to cuddle a player, and he gave her uh, the old stiff arm. I think for me, it's just I run hot. You know, I just I kick out so much body heat. I don't need somebody else's making me worse. Sure, I, I understand that. all that. I, I run cold as ice, and I still don't want to cuddle. This aggressive young gal is 22 years old by the name of Jillian. So it says here uh, she and her man were hanging out, don't you know? She, quote, continually tried to cuddle with the dude. And when he, uh, when he said, uh, you, know, uh, you know, get your mitts off of me, She came uncorked. She allegedly snatched out some of the dude's chest hairs. (laughs) Papa! Rora! Joke's on you. I don't have any chest there. Now what? Now what are you going to do? She snatched it right out of his, uh, out of its moorings, the guy's chest hair. Then she scratched his face up for him. Then she turned all George the Animal Steel on him. And she bit him on the forehead. (laughs) And then she broke a pimp's cellular telephone. She was arrested for domestic battery and told to stay the hell away from the guy. Never had a gal pull hairs out of me. Boy, I bet that would sting like a sumbitch. Has anyone here had an incident where... Somebody wanted to cuddle, and you said, no, that's not really my thing, and they got mad? No. Even no, annoyed? They're no. mad? No, that's weird. Uh, this person says they are willing to cuddle as long as they get some, but absolutely no cuddling afterwards. No, <laughs> that's silly. All right. I can blow through this one pretty quick, and then I suppose we should move on with our lives. How many of you have what they call here an Apple Watch? I do no, not. No, I've always wanted one. No, I, I bought one for a short amount of time. Um, I, I told you before, I got it because I thought, you know, this might be nice because I, won't, I can see a text or whatever, and I won't be pulling my phone out of my pocket. So it'll be less rude, right, instead of handing, holding my phone all the time. But what happened is I'd look at an alert, and then people would be like, oh, you got to go? Or thinking oh, that I'm, checking I'm time. telling them sure. I got to get out of this. You know, I don't want to be in this conversation. So I need to get getting rid of it. I'm not much of a watch guy anyway. So you did have one. For a real short amount of time. Did you ever give away. someone a terrible beating with it? Uh, with my Apple Watch? Yes. No. This gal did. She got arrested for another one of these domestic battery deals. Um, she got arrested for domestic battery with an Apple Watch. Uh, like our last gal, she had a meltdown over something or another. She clipped her boyfriend upside the skull with the Apple Watch. She side-armed it across the room, and it smoked the poor guy in the noggin. It was an argument. Oh, here it is. It was an argument about relationship issues at 1 o'clock in the morning that went sideways. Oh. I think any of us could have predicted that a 1 a.m. relationship talk usually turns into garbage. Yeah, yeah it's you know, never a good idea. Anytime I've ever had a relationship talk, it's usually a work night and it's usually past midnight. Oh. It seems that that's when, you know, because you could go all day going, are you sure nothing's wrong? Because it really <laughs> seems like you're upset about something. No, 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 we're all good. And then at midnight, we need to talk. You've told us before that your old lady waits until you're almost sound asleep to finally build up the courage to bother you about some kind of relationship nonsense. Which is like the world's worst time, right? Because you're thinking, I got to get up in three hours. Now we're going to have this conversation. I don't know why my voice did that. It kind of, it peaked for a second and it came back down. That was silly. I didn't notice. Take that out of the podcast. I didn't notice a thing. That's when she wants to bring it up. 
when you're at your most exhausted <laughs> and stressed that you got to get up in a couple hours. This Mine is would funny. always be like when I'm working at home. I would be working, and then she would want to talk. And I'm like, oh, really? You just got to, you, you see, you guys got to make a stand right from the get-go and, and make a rule. No talking. <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed to communicate. Don't this speak is, unless spoken to. This is funny right here. It sounds like the dude, again, lady has a meltdown. Sounds like the dude was packing her bags for her, as in, you're out of here. That's funny. And that's when she Pablo lopez the watch across the room and knocked him across the, uh, the head with it. Uh, oh, says here these two have three little kids together, so I'm sure they're going to be just fine, right? <laughs> they're going to be fine. I bet Pablo Lopez could pitch a perfect Apple Watch if he wanted to right across the plate. He could. He He's absolutely could. Individual. We got to take a damn break. We'll be back in a few minutes. We'll check the sports. Sports. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. I'm glad he didn't do what we hoped. <laughs> Get the camera off him while he's picking his nose. Yeah, that's not cool at all. I agree. Some silly tennis match was happening over the weekend, and camera catches a fan sitting in the stands, and the poor bastard's picking his nose, and the cameraman stays with him. I like That's that not the cool announcer said, come on. Yeah, let the man live. Yeah, we don't need this. <laughs> I mean, that's going to stick with the guy the rest of his life. Uh-huh. Everybody he knows, texting him, calling him. Yep. Hey, you dummy, you got your thumb up your nose on television. What are you, an animal or something? Yeah, the guy's, he's not going to be able to let this go for months. No, that's, that's too bad. I mean, it's fun, and I, I can see where the cameraman was going with that, but I don't yeah, know. you're looking for something, right? You're Otherwise, for... what do you do? You're showing tennis. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's yeah. a tennis match. You know, there's not much to look at in the first place. But I don't know. They, that poor guy. Hey, uh, I'll tell you that. I don't know. A lot of you still are unable to see this. And I feel bad. Because that, that series with the Astros over the weekend, that Twins-Astros series was great. Mm-hmm. Great series. A lot of fun. A lot of drama. I, you know, you know what I, I got a kick out of. About every four or five at bat, someone was getting hit in the face with a fastball. That was, <laughs> every, You're everyone, not kidding. A lot of it was hit comical. <laughs> everyone getting knocked down at the plate. In the end, Christian Vasquez leads off the ninth inning with a tall dong and broke the tie. Twins walked off the Astros yesterday. They start a series in Chicago. We got plenty to cover when Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder show up here in about a half hour. Wolves free agency. Terrible news from the Minnesota Vikings. Randy and Brad will be back. Uh, with us uh, around 7.30. For now, stay tuned for Josh's News Report. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Are you ready to beat the heat this summer? Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is here to help you say goodbye to sweltering heat and hello to ultimate comfort. Ashley, what specials do they have going on this month? Celebrate Christmas in July with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get huge savings with $1,776 off a new multi-head ductless system. Visit standardheating.com to discover all the goodies in Santa's bag. Every week, Michael Rosenbaum is getting deep with someone new on the Inside of You podcast. Let's get inside of Kevin Smith. I can go to a movie and enjoy it, and I'm never like, I could have done that better. Really? Never. I started as a fan. I'll finish as a fan. And the difference between this iteration of Kevin Smith at age 53 and the one that most people met at the beginning of my career, back then, I would have told you all the movies that I hate and here are the reasons why they suck. And you would never hear that from me today. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum, wherever you listen. He was extraordinary. Everybody loved being around him. Phenomenal athlete. He could do anything he want. Kyrie, belief in itself. It's very sad news. As Minnesota Viking rookie Kyrie Jackson died in a car accident in Maryland over the weekend. The crash happened shortly after 3 a.m. Saturday and involved three vehicles, police said. Investigators believe the driver of a silver Infinity tried to change lanes at a high rate of speed and struck a car that Jackson was in, as well as the Chevrolet Impala. The Vikings wrote on X, Our thoughts are with Kyrie's family, friends, teammates, and coaches, as well as all the victims of this tragic accident. Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell said he was crushed by the news of Jackson's death. The other occupants of Jackson's car also died in that crash. Officials believe alcohol could have been a contributing factor. The occupants of the other cars were not hurt. The Maryland native played for Alabama and Oregon. He was drafted by the Vikings in April in round four as the 108th overall pick. He was only 24 years old. That's brutal. So sad. Totally unnecessary, too. 
That is just absolutely awful. At, cops think that alcohol was involved on which end? They haven't said yet. Uh, they, well, as far as I know, they said the Infinity, the driver of that vehicle. Okay. That, so, who, the who, one that crashed into Okay, mm-hmm. the one who crashed into the, the young people. Yeah, that's what I've heard, at least. Ah, Christ. An officer at Florida's Polk County Correctional Institute has been arrested after he called 911 because he was, he was upset he got a ticket. He got a ticket for repeatedly honking his horn, but he had a reason why. <laughs> a deputy on patrol saw 34-year-old Douglas Morse driving a red Jeep while repeatedly honking his horn about 11.45 p.m. The deputy pulled Morse over, and the man claimed to be honking his horn because, quote, it makes him drive faster. The deputy added that after writing Morse a citation for the violation, he became upset and verbally abusive and then called 911. When the deputy asked him to hang up, Morse refused, saying he didn't agree with that citation. We expect more professional behavior from those who work in the public service industry, stated Sheriff Grady Judge, whose likeness is captured on a T-shirt Dana bought me. Mm -hmm. And uh, dialing 911 because you're upset you received a traffic citation is not only ridiculous... It ties up emergency lines and resources and are de- that are designated for those who have true emergencies, Judd said. Right, that's silly. Morris was arrested for misusing 911 and resisting arrest. Can we go back to the dude? This is a grown man. Yeah, said, I like, year old guy. I like to honk the horn because it helps me drive faster, makes me drive. He's got a respectable <laughs> job. <laughs> that sounds like something an eight-year-old would say. <laughs> beep, beep. Uh, sir, I'm going to... I have to tell you, you don't know how cars work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that. The new superintendent of the Spring Grove Area School District in York County, Pennsylvania, is a little embarrassed after he was arrested for DUI three days before he was supposed to start his new job. Oh. Sucks. Pennsylvania State Police said they encountered 51-year-old Joseph Bradley about 2.30 a.m. June 28th. An investigation concluded he was driving under the influence. He apologized to the Spring Grove community and his family and said he will accept appropriate consequences for his actions. I apologize to the entire Spring Grove community for my actions. I vow to do better and rebuild the great trust given to me by this district's board and families. I intend to address these charges in a forthright manner and will accept any appropriate consequences for my actions. The district a lot post- of fancy words there. Yeah, well, he's, you he know, must really he's, a mean school, it. he's a schooled individual. Oh, sure. Yeah. Who likes to have a couple of bumps and get behind the wheel. <laughs> the district posted on its website Wednesday it's aware of the pending charge against Bradley, and they notified the di- or he did notify the district right after the incident. The release didn't indicate his blood alcohol level. Mm. Don't know how hammered he was. Enough to, for a cop to pay attention, though. A Springfield, Missouri man's been charged after carjacking a woman right in front of a Greene County deputy. Ah, oh. the luck. Dang it. July 1st, a woman was leaving work when 28-year-old Jacob Gregory and another man flagged her down for a ride. She agreed to drive the two men in a, to a come-and-go gas station, even though she didn't know him. Investigators said while the woman was driving, Gregory told her he had a gun and to keep driving or he would shoot her. Gregory got out of the car and went around to the driver's side, but unlucky for him, at the same time, a Greene County deputy was driving and noticed what happened. According to court documents, Gregory was seemingly unaware of the deputy and continued trying to carjack the woman with the deputy's dash cam rolling through the entire encounter. He was eventually arrested several blocks away from the intersection where he attempted the carjack. There are still people out there who will say to complete strangers, Sure, get in my car, I'll give you a ride. Yeah, are you kidding never me? Be me. <laughs> no, uh-uh. You're liable to get stabbed with five knives mm. if you do something like yeah. that. My friends barely even let me in their cars. <laughs> no, no way a stranger would let me in. <laughs> you know, my mom is one of those. Uh, she picked up a, a gentleman um, who my, said, to, hey, uh, I need a ride. And my mom's like, well, I'm on my way to church. And he's like, well, lo and behold, I'm on my way to church. And it, Which church? Turns out it was the same one. You know, he was just echoing what she said. That's great. And uh, she goes, parks, the guy gets out, and she goes to grab her purse, and purse gone. No way. <laughs> Stole wow. her purse for her efforts. Never saw that coming. <laughs> uh, I thought it was going to be the story about the guy who showed your mother his wiener. No, that's a different story. I love that story. I don't like that story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that story at all. Well, wait, what happened there? She was, uh, <laughs> she parked in a parking ramp in yeah. Minneapolis, and she was walking to go to work, and some guy's like, hey, look, lady, here's my wiener. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not like that story? It's a funny story. Because <laughs> my, my mom was assaulted. I, I don't like that story. 
Was it good wiener? Bad wiener? I don't know. I didn't ask her. You can call and ask. Not I'll ask her. I hope she doesn't remember. <laughs> and I hope she can't. I hope she doesn't text me and say, oh, it was a wonderful wiener. <laughs> was it a good wiener or a bad wiener? No, uh, if that is, happens it, to your mom, I hope you ask her that question. <laughs> That's the question we, uh, we need to answer at this point? <laughs> Can you imagine the police report? What do we talk? I mean, is it girthy? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Is it pretty? How's the coloration? All well, if, good? If it makes you feel any better, I've always liked that story. <laughs> I don't like that story. Okay. A 19-year-old woman's been arrested in Texas after providing a false report claiming her non-existent child went missing in order for her friend to get her missing car back quicker. Stacy Smith placed a 911 call June 30th, claiming an unnamed subject had taken her friend's vehicle and her child. The vehicle was later found by police, but the kid wasn't there. An investigation revealed her child was entirely fictitious, and Smith had conjured up the infant in order to expedite the police search for her friend's car. It's a smart move. According to Texas Center for the Missing, yeah, the cops aren't going to go, well, we found the car, kid, not our problem. Right. They're going to look for that. According to Tex- the uh, Texas Center for the Missing, a Houston-based nonprofit which seeks to support missing people and their families, less than 1% of child abductions involve a stranger, which it's said are the most serious cases where bodily injury and death are most likely to occur. Oh, God. The center said that in 2023 alone, 9,531 missing child cases were filed in just the Houston-Galveston region. Research compiled by the World Population Review found Texas had the second highest number of open missing person cases in the U.S. behind only California. Uh, Texas is iffy. A Pennsylvania woman was shot in the back by a three-year-old. The incident occurred after a man who became tired of holding his loaded handgun left it unattended near a group of toddlers, police said. Witnesses told authorities they saw 41-year-old Brian Siegfried handling the firearm on the front porch before he cocked the gun, placed it on a table, and walked across the street. What could go wrong? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, toddlers, watch this cool gun, but don't touch it. Police said the weapon was in the direct vicinity of four toddlers, all of them under the age of five, including a three-year-old who managed to get their hands on the firearm. Siegfried later admitted he just got tired of holding the gun, so he put it down. The 33-year-old vict- victim is expected to survive. None of the children were injured. That's how you do it right there. That's how you, uh, that's how you become a responsible gun owner. The Freeborn County Government Center in Albert Lee was evacuated Friday afternoon after a pipe bomb was found inside. The evacuation, which happened about 3 p.m., came after a gun lockbox was seized by Albert Lee police during a traffic arrest. The box was taken inside the building and opened, revealing an apparent pipe bomb. The St. Paul Bomb Squad was called to the scene and the bomb was eventually removed. That incident is under investigation. Then in Florida, body cam footage shows the moment a chemical pipe bomb exploded on a deputy during a traffic stop. In April, 60-year-old Charles Legault was pulled over by a Putnam County Sheriff's Office deputy. In the video, the deputy found a gun, drugs, and drug paraphernalia. So what are these dope baggies in this cigarette pouch right here for? You use cocaine as well? No, no, no. I got uh, six heart attacks. Well, what does that have to do with the three baggies with the white substance in that cigarette pouch right there? About eight minutes and 45 seconds into the video, the deputy continued to search when the chemical pipe bomb exploded in his face. Yeah, it's, it's good. Oh, what the f- The deputy struggled oh, to breathe but managed to call for backup, his uniform covered in a white chemical powder, later determined to be chlorine. A police spokesperson said the officer got very lucky that it wasn't worse. Had that been filled more or had been larger or got in his eyes, I mean, you know, you can talk about blindness and those kind of permanent things that could happen to him and permanent lung damage, depending on how close he is. And and you can see, again, the struggle to breathe just really highlights how dangerous these traffic stops can be. He was taken to the hospital and treated for respiratory injuries. Well, was that rigged up by that redneck to go off when somebody uh, did this or that? It appeared that way. Either that or the cop, I guess, just touched it a certain way. I'm not sure. Residents at a Santa Monica apartment building are telling the naked truth about a neighbor, claiming he regularly walks around in the nude and terrifies them. He jumped in front of her as she was trying to exit out of the building. And as she tried to go around him, he moved closer and jumped in front of her. That's when he told her that she doesn't belong in here and she needs to get the F out of here. Well, that's rude. Several people living in the West L.A. apartment said he stalks the building butt naked while also hurling obscenities at his neighbors. 
Well, someone ought to get a hold of this guy. I think they're trying. All right. <laughs> Among the laundry list of complaints, residents say not only does he walk nude, he's also known for pooping in the building's garage oh, no. ah. and trashing his apartment, with one woman claiming she's often seen him throwing objects out his windows. I see things thrown out. Um, <laughs> he defecates in the parking stalls. Whatever he uses to wipe himself, he brings it throughout here. Ooh. Maybe he's a grizzly bear, going back to a conversation <laughs> earlier. Mm. Another resident said the man has berated her. Yet other residents alleged he was touching himself in front of a pool full of children over Memorial Day weekend. That sounds shady. Residents have raised concerns with both the building's owners, but they say nothing's been done. Santa Monica police handed over the reports to the city attorney to determine the next steps. The owner of an Indiana security company was accused of not only using security cameras to spy on his clients without their knowledge, but even worse, possessing images of child porn. According to court documents, the investigation into Adam Anderson, owner of Anderson Video Security and Alarm LLC, uncovered that he'd been using video cameras installed in clients' homes and or businesses through a security company to watch clients without their knowledge or consent. While the specifics of his arrest for child porn remain under a seal, a court document reveals that Anderson was reportedly found to be in possession of child porn images, which involved children under the age of 12. Yuck. Police seized devices belonging to Anderson, which are being searched for additional evidence. It's not good. A man's in jail after police say he attacked another man with a sword at a downtown Pittsburgh hotel. Around 1 a.m. Thursday, officers were called to the Wyndham Grand Hotel to a report of a man bleeding and calling for help. A group was in a room on the fifth floor when 26-year-old Jake O'Leary of South Carolina began wildly swinging a sword, attacking the victim for some reason. No word on what led to the bladed blitz. <laughs> they have no clue why this guy came in with a sword. Well, at least they haven't reported on it. Well, yeah. He's a guy that walks around town with a sword. They're... they're very rarely is there a real reason behind anything. You know <laughs> that's, I mean? a, that's a good point, Nick. <laughs> Kevin Bacon, 66 today. Uh, I, I just saw him in that uh, not-so-great uh, Beverly Hills Cop movie. Yeah, I like me some Kevin Bacon. He's well, good. sure, he's yeah. a talented kid. Yeah, he sure is. He's, he's easy to watch. And that's 93X News. Coming up next, we'll talk with Brad Ryder and Randy Shaver. <laughs> Randy Shaver. Put that ass. Put that ass. Put that ass. On the half assed morning show. I don't know what the hell those fellas were saying, but they showed a lot of heart. They're pretty excited. Showed a lot of heart. It's our first chance to jaw jack with Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder since returning from vacation. Our first crack at the new retired Randy Shaver. He's out on the road somewhere. Uh, do you feel different, Randy? Uh, no, I feel great. Well, but do you feel different? I mean, you're free. It's a whole what? new approach day to uh, day. You know, do you, fe you must feel... Uh, liberated or something um, I would say that's a good word to use yeah, yeah. I mean I, I feel um, uh, unburdened yeah um, <laughs> I had my granddaughter with me Monday through Thursday last week so there was a lot that came with that but from Friday until today has been pretty fun because um i wake up and go hmm what am i gonna do today you don't so, got a damn worry in the world anymore awesome. you don't gotta go into friggin work i mean unburdened's a good word you're no longer thinking ah the fun's only gonna last a couple days but then right. i gotta go back to work that's gotta be a great feeling yeah as long as wapple leaves me alone i think i'm okay <laughs> Has he been, he's been bothering you a lot lately he well, does that. yeah he does yeah He's kind of a stalker. He falls in love with people, contacts them constantly, and then I feel them. that. Yeah, yes. he moves on to somebody new <laughs> yeah, he, after he physically harms them. Usually, <laughs> I mean, you've never harmed anyone, have you? Before? No, well, he's never. attacked never. a few people. He's, Hi, Brad. He's yelled at people. Good morning. What what Randy just described is is called summer for me. 
Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. You're, Very you're, good. You're yeah. off the hook, too. But do Brad, you do anything, Brad, over the summer? I, I could. I, I do a little bit of summer advising for incoming freshmen, but I can do that from anywhere, and I really only have to do it a few hours a week. So. But still, Brad Ryder, I bet you once in a while you think, for Christ's sake, September's on the way. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No, you're right. I mean, once we get through July, then I start to kind of think, okay, I better go back in the office a little bit here. Well, I want, I wonder if, any, if your wife would be interested in doing this to you. I loved when the, and they come out earlier and earlier and earlier, when Target will put out their back to school shopping. <laughs> I, would, I would paste that all over the house. I would put that absolutely everywhere. Torture the young people. Yeah, like July you know, 5th now or whatever. <laughs> hey, look, there's sales. Any second now, school's with, about to start. Yeah, with with every year already. that goes by, I, I miss working in sports less and less. I was I literally was I was out on my pontoon on the 4th of July, Yeah. and I was kind of just looking at my phone a little bit and scrolling through Twitter, and I saw that the Wolves had, you know, signed Joe Ingles, I think it was. And, yep. and I, at, at that moment, I thought to myself, I'm here instead of working on a press release for Joe freaking Ingles. Oh. <laughs> so at that moment, I was like, you know what? This is better. There's yeah. just uh, there's just such a beautiful. Uh, I, I have a I have a beautiful picture painted in my head of maybe one day feeling what Randy Shaver feels now every single day. Sure, you've got responsibility. you got to be here. you got to be there. But yeah. it has nothing to do with work, and your mind is free of it. It must be a magical thing, Randy. Congratulations again. Well, thank you. I yeah, appreciate man. it. Well, where That's the hell great. are you? I, I'm at home. Oh. We're, 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 we're testing out a new uh, uh, system here that I will be using once I – my wife and I are taking off on a road trip starting tomorrow. Oh. And uh, so I, apparently this sounds pretty good because you guys aren't complaining. So <laughs> It sounds a little different, but at least it's on time. There's no delay. We've yeah. been dealing with a delay for months around here. So that right. I, I'm happy for that in, in yeah. itself. So yeah. So you're heading out somewhere tomorrow to be, uh, again, and not just to enjoy freedom. Yeah, we're going on a little road trip tomorrow. I'll tell you, uh, we we don't take off until uh, tomorrow morning. So on Wednesday, I'll uh, I'll give you a few clues, and you can figure out where I am on Wednesday. All right, that sounds like yeah, fun. Yeah, little adventure for us. Oh cool. wow! Well, uh, yeah, we're back after a, a week away. Happy to be back. Happy to hear everybody's voices again. Uh, by the way, the uh, the opening audio you heard there. Uh, where they were speaking a foreign language. That was a baseball player who got himself a bunt home run in the Korean Baseball League. So dude lays down a bunt with men on first and third base. The opposition tossed the ball all over the ballpark like a pack of drunks trying to get outs. And everybody scores. The dude who laid down the bunt he even eventually made her all the way to home plate. So obviously, it's not scored as a home run. No, it's, it's a, a bunch of errors. Base hit with a pile of errors, but uh, yeah. it was kind of fun to watch. Is that uh, do we do we have a website anymore? No, basically not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been two weeks, and we can't post anything on the web. It's comical. Yeah. Yeah. You you may remember when we last left off that uh, you, when you went to our website. I think it was Friday morning. I can't remember the morning. It said that it wasn't working due to lack of payment, yeah. which is a mm-hmm. lot of fun. Yeah, and it, it still oh, no. says that whenever I try to go to the the website we use to post stuff to the website, so we still so, haven't paid our bills. So, is that how it's is that like true that you haven't paid your bills? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, but at least that's what we've been told. But you know, I bet if I bet they wouldn't tell us one way or the other. <laughs> so you know, look look that video up on your own, Summers else, uh, Korean ball player. <laughs> go, go to a different station's website. To find it. <laughs> I mean, uh, what what do I really give a rat's ass where you find the video? Uh, it'd be nice if we had a place for it, but is I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Uh, I was saying earlier, for those of you who. Are, are, are able to watch the Minnesota Twins. I, I hope you were able to see some of what they put together this weekend because yeah. that was a really fun series against the Houston Astros. And and the way it ended yesterday with a walk-off home run by Christian Vasquez, that was a blast. And just the Miranda, I mean, the 12 consecutive at-bat hits and tying a major league record and the unfortunate injury to Royce Lewis, it's been a very busy news week for the Twins. Talking about, thinking about Brad here and, you know, being 
fortunate to be out on the lake and not have to deal with, I mean, Correa making the all-star team. This has been a busy week for the Twins and a successful week, too. I mean, they're solidly in second place. They're six games back, and they seem to be playing much, much better baseball right now. So They've won five consecutive series. They've won their last five series. Uh, Straighten me out now on Royce Lewis. What's the word? I think he... From I think he's out indefinitely at this point. I think they put him on the 15-day DL. And so uh, it's another leg injury, from what I understand. Jesus. Um, but, you know, they called up Brooks Lee. And so now we get a chance to see this Brooks Lee play. He may never go back to the minors. I mean, I, I think we're what we're going to start to see here is the transition that the Twins are going to make into what the future looks like for this for this team. Um, you've already seen bits and pieces of it with Austin Martin being called up. Um, I think we're going to start to see this transition being made. And, you know, Royce Lewis is what, only 24? So, I mean, he's part of that transition. But he's just, it's its that sad feeling we have with Byron Buxton. We You, you just feel like so much potential has been wasted because he's hurt too much. Let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope, again, it's it's something that doesn't keep him out long, but he just seems to be bitten by this injury bug. And it was a running injury again. It was another one of those running the base paths injury. That sucks. Being, being out here uh, at the cabin, I'm a little torn because I can actually watch the Twins out here. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to sit down in front of the TV for three hours and watch But I did. But I did watch a fair amount of the series, and you're, you're right. I mean, the offense is clicking. Um, he, they're going to find a place for him in the Brooks League. They're going to find oh, a place no for him doubt. in the lineup somewhere. I think he played a little bit of second base when he was over in St. Paul, too. So, you know, they're going to, I think, maybe shuttle him a little bit between second and third and maybe some DHing and maybe oh, yeah. giving Correa a little bit of a rest here and there at short. Well, so he they'll, played they'll, a little shortstop yesterday. Brad yeah. Ryder, what kind of a guy doesn't want to sit in front of the television for <laughs> yeah. three hours? I'm not out here. What kind of a comment is that? <laughs> Not out here. I don't like what that. kind of precedent are you setting? Yeah. Think of the kids, man. Set a good example for the kids. Uh, Matt Walner is back up now, and I was happy. Oh, boy, he laced a base hit yesterday, just hit the piss out of I'm glad to see Matt Walner back. It's too bad about Lewis, but when Walner finds his way back up to the club and after watching what Brooks Lee can do out there, I mean – there's there's a lot to be excited about. Yeah. You, you mentioned the Miranda thing was just off the charts crazy. The guy yeah. goes ahead with 12 consecutive hits, ties a record that hasn't been dangled with since, what, 1952? Yeah. Something like that. So that was great. And I think the, uh, the boys on the broadcast yesterday... Uh, uh, Glenn Perkins and uh, Corey Provis, they, they mentioned the other names on the list. So the list of players to record... 12 consecutive hits. Uh, the list of players, the names are great. They is are. <laughs> 1952, Walt Droppo, I think is how you say the name. D-R-O-P-O, Walt Droppo. Pinky Higgins oh, is Pinky another Higgins. player who went 12. That shows you how long it's been yeah. since anyone's dangled with that record. So what a riot. There you go. Uh, and this, Miranda, Miranda didn't even start the season up with the Twins. He no. He started the season in St. Paul. So, I mean, this probably won't happen, but the guy, you know, might end up, he probably won't, but might end up back in St. Paul before the end of the season if well, other you, guys keep playing. Oh, not the way he's playing right now. No, not the way he's playing right now, of course. Oh, yeah. but, you never yeah. know. You never know. But, yeah, I mean, great for him because last season, Jose Miranda was just an absolute lost season. So here he is uh, doing some damage. Tonight, they start a series in Chicago. This is what you love, Randy, when the Twins play the White Sox yeah, or, or the Athletics. Or the uh, Colorado Rockies. Right. Any of those three teams, uh, these are the games you pile them up. You pile up the Ws when you play teams like this, and hopefully that'll be the case. Then I think they go on a West Coast trip to San Francisco, and I'm not sure who else after that. So I think they're gone for a while. So I think they're, the All-Star break hit. Oh, then it's the All Star break. Yes. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This the series in San Fran will be their last move before the All Star break. Speaking of tonight's series, which begins in Chicago, uh, Marnie Gellner is scheduled to call the games. 
It's great. Uh, at least tonight. Uh, is it the whole series? Uh, it's the whole, it's the series. whole series. Okay, yeah. that would make sense for, for her to be there the whole series. So she's the first woman to serve as the play-by-play commentator for the Twins during a regular season game. She'll be filling in for Corey Provis. Of course, we all know who should be doing the regular announcing. Nothing against <laughs> Corey Provis. He does a great job. But Dick should still be doing his thing in yeah. there. We'll talk to Dick tomorrow. But good for Marnie Gellner. Christ, she's done everything in this town. She has. With about every club you can come up with. And she's been doing lead play-by-play for the Lynx for many years already. Yeah. So, But she's going to get a crack at a regular season series. And uh, I think that's terrific. Super talented. A lot of preparing. She must be great at what we call around here show prep. She must be great. Show at it. prep, yes. Don't you think, Josh? She must be very organized in her prep. I always thought that about any the play by play stuff. That's got to be so difficult. All the stats they have, all the stories they're able to bring so quickly. Yeah, they, so, they, they have to... well, well, that's what they say about all of us, right? <laughs> well, not all of us. Not all of us. Some of us. Some of us. <laughs> they named. Uh... <laughs> They went ahead and named all the starters for that All-Star game. Uh, oh, they named all, everybody. All of them. Yeah, they named everybody. Do they normally? I thought normally they went starters and then gave they us some they time to think about week, it. Starters a week ago. And oh, then they did. Yesterday, yesterday they announced the uh, the reserves. Okay. And the astounding part is there are 32 first-time All-Stars. That's which great. is wow. Which is amazing. Um, and some of the guys, like Paul Skeens, for example, the pitcher for the Pirates, was called up eight weeks ago. That tells you how great this kid has been for the Pirates. In two months, he has earned his way to the All-Star. He's the first player in Major League history to be drafted one year and make the All-Star team the next year. That's, that's, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he may even get the start in the All-Star game. That would be this, wonderful. Which is amazing. So... Yeah, I mean, lots of brand new faces. Lots of guys that you probably, when the season started, you're going to go, who's that guy? Like David Fry for for Cleveland or Jer- uh, Jerickson uh, Profar for the Padres, uh, Matt Strom for the Phillies. You're going, who who are those guys? You there's those a few guys. guys. There, there's yeah. quite a few guys who I've never heard of. Chicago Cubs, uh, Shota Imanaga. Uh, well, he's the Japanese pitcher who came over and has been, he's been really good. Tanner Scott from the Miami Marlins. Plenty, and that's great to have new faces. Uh, yeah. Carlos Correa is in there with the reserves. And that's uh, great for him. Uh, uh, Luis Arise made it into the mix, too. After uh, being traded. <laughs> yeah, right. From Miami to San Diego. So that's a good week away. Um, but uh, I mean, if he's want to, I'm sure we'll get into it as we get closer to the All-Star game. But everybody's been named now. I don't know how many of these guys might, uh, you know, might not make it because of injury or otherwise. But. If you want to see the names, they're out there. You just won't find them on our website. <laughs> Here's a dude. I don't know if he was named. No. If he was named an all-star, um, it would be a real shame. Uh, Chicago Cubs pitcher Colton Brewer broke his pitching hand, punching a wall after a bad outing Saturday versus the Los Angeles Angels. We hear this year after year after uh, year. The, well, we know that here in Minnesota with McDaniel's injury a couple of years ago <laughs> yeah. with the Timberwolves. So we, we've lived that already. The wall always wins. That's right. I forgot about Jaden McDaniels. God, that was so dumb. Use the offhand. I mean, you if you're a pitcher, mm. take your glove off, use yeah. the left hand. Yeah. yeah, this guy punched his pitching hand into a wall because he was by, he was upset. You know, he stunk it up out on the field. He told the uh, media, "You know, my intention wasn't to break my hand." He said, "Oh, <laughs> really? That's usually not really insight." No, no, we 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 believe you on that. Um, emotions get the best of us sometimes, he says, and they do. By God, they yeah, do. They do. Yeah. Ah, man. Yeah. I forgot about, I was just thinking baseball. But then you brought me back to Jaden McDaniels. Here's a guy, what was that, two years ago, a year? He's basically, I mean, uh, if it was a year ago, you know, 
Of course, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony, we'll, we'll talk some Wolves stuff here in a minute. Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards, are, while they're here, are going to be the guys, the guys on the Timberwolves. But a year or two ago, it probably was a tie between Kyle Anderson and Jaden McDaniels as to who were really the MVPs of the ball club, just the do-all guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Uh here we are. Here they were, what, heading into the playoffs, and McDaniels wets his pants and punches a wall and breaks his hand. That's when you know you got a young ball club, when guys (laughs) are running around punching walls. Oh, God. Well, we might as well we'll flip on over here to the Wolves because there's been some free agency stuff happening. Timberwolves. Free agency stuff happening. Uh, speaking of slow mo, Kyle Anderson, he's off to play for the silly Golden State Warriors. I don't like to see Kyle go because I really loved watching him play, but I get it. And to take his place, I guess, although Brad Ryder doesn't seem too excited about it. <laughs> oh, no, I am actually. I just, I would just, rather be on a lake than do the press release. Yeah, you want to write the guy's <laughs> press release. Joe Ingles. A little long in the tooth, but a really, really solid three-point shooter. Yeah. I think that's a good move. That's a really good replacement for him. He can shoot. Um, He's not going to run the fast break, but he can spot up and shoot, and that's what they need. They need spot-up three-point shooters to take some pressure off of Edwards. No doubt. Joe Ingles, and he's tight with uh, Mike Conley Jr. and Rudy. They used to play yeah. together in Utah, so you got that vibe happening. I've just always thought, you know, boy, that guy can can shoot, and uh, the more three-point shooters, the better on, uh, on, on the Timberwolves ball club. If you don't know Joe Ingles, uh, go ahead, look up a picture of the guy. He looks like uh, a dude your uncle plays YMCA basketball <laughs> with. <laughs> He's harmless looking, but the guy... So I like that move. We lost Jordan McLaughlin to uh, Sack Mental. Yeah, but with the two young guys that they drafted, you knew that was coming. So yeah. not yeah. a surprise. He wasn't going to play anymore. No. Nope. The, nope. kid, the kid from Illinois, I can't think of his name. Uh, Shannon. Shannon. And then, a, yeah. and then uh, Dinkus McGee from Kentucky. I can't think of his name. <laughs> Dillingham. Name. Dillingham. Yeah. Dinkus McGee. Yep. I love Jordan McLaughlin. I really love watching him play. I, I still think the guy can be a a regular backup point guard. You know, he he had moments here with the Wolves where it looked like, oh, he's going to get more regular minutes, and then he would sit on the bench for a while. It's been kind of, uh, what's the word, uneven for Jordan uh, so far in his career. I hope he has a lot of great success. Did I miss anything else free agent-wise with the Timberwolves? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so either that they really can't do a lot unless they actually trade away salary so i think that's about the extent of what they can do you think so yeah now a couple big moves otherwise uh clay thompson speaking of silly golden state you know all the success he had with uh steph curry and the warriors he's off to play for dallas um his production has dropped off a little bit since he got hurt so badly. I think is, yeah. that, is that kind of what happened here? Yeah, and I think he's. I think there. I was reading some articles about how he has whined and cried about his contract situation and money and not being appreciated, and which is kind of BS because, if I remember right, before he got hurt and missed almost two years, he had just signed a big four-year deal that paid him a lot of money. So. The Warriors actually paid him while he was hurt, uh, hoping for him to come back. So there's a lot of, I guess, some some bad feelings between him and management in Golden State. So uh, and, was, and it's yeah. it's just he a changing ha- changing. He wasn't of the happy. Guard. He wasn't happy when they extended Wiggins and they yep. extended um, Jordan Poole and didn't extend him. I mean, oh, that's well, kind of cry. What I heard. Right. Yeah. He's one of those. So he wanted huh? to go get paid. He wanted to go get his bag somewhere else, as the kids would say. For God's sake, yeah. you're, just, you're, just, you're just drowning in million-dollar bills, and they still don't appreciate me enough. I can't stand that bit. So go ahead. Go to Dallas. Paul George went to uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. Now the Wolves got to worry about the Sacramento Kings even more than usual. They went ahead with a sign-and-trade deal with the Chicago Bulls. Sack Mental's got DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. 
So you Good give, player. Yep, DeRozan and that De'Aaron Fox and uh, uh, what's the big kid's name Sabonis. in the middle? Sabonis. Sabonis. Oh, yeah. They're going to be tough. The West just kind of keeps getting a little bit better because Dallas got better. Uh, yep. I mean, we can complain about Clay Thompson, but they just got a lot better. Who's having the most sex this summer out of all of us? Who would who would step <laughs> forward? Who would step forward and saying they're get they think they're getting the most action out of all of us this summer? Let me see. Now I got to dig into my show prep here. <laughs> <laughs> so far this summer, or what we're aspiring to? <laughs> so f- oh, I, not not just this summer. Let's just go with well. Let me let me let me, uh, let me get my act together here. Okay. Just this summer, who's getting the most action this summer? Well, pretty soon I think I might break into the double digits. Well, look at you. Oh, wow. We are in July. Look at you. Not to brag. Atta boy. Proud of you. You still knock one out now and again, huh? Sometimes. Atta yeah. boy. Former NBA player Nick Young, I remember him. He always drove me nuts. That guy just drove me nuts. He just Swaggy uh, P. Swaggy P oh, the, was the oh, that, stupid that, that, nickname that he probably gave to himself. Oh, yes. You know he gave that to himself. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nick Young. That's that's not something the kids can uh, you know uh, rally around on social media. I got I'm Swaggy P. He was all noise and no uh, production, uh, Nick Young. But he did. I guess recently he went on a TV show or something, and he said this. He said that Anthony Edwards has produced three kids so far this summer. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's impressive. Dude. It's the off season. Oh, that's, uh, that cracks me up. Can anybody top that? Text us if you've had more than three kids this summer. <laughs> some people do commercials and some people, yeah. Wow. Text us 651-989-9393 if you've produced more than three children this summer. Because that's what Nick Young I mean, says. That's impressive, Anthony actually. Edwards has done, yes. I wonder what Nick Cannon's best year was. Oh, Ooh, the there kids, you go. All the kids and all the different women. Good question. I bet you can look that up. I bet you can find that summers. Or Sean Kemp. Sean yeah, Kemp. Uh, well, that's got to be the all-timer. Calvin right? Murphy. We could do this all over again. Antonio Cromartie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nick Cannon, though. Everyone talks about him. He just pumps out babies. We had a listener a couple weeks back say they just had twins. I mean, so there's two. Okay. Oh, I forget about twins. You yeah, could be right. someone who's been <laughs> you saddled. work with a twin. <laughs> I also <laughs> forgot about <laughs> twins. <laughs> the, the, the option of pushing out two, three, you know, from one woman. I don't know how many baby mamas, but it sounds like Edwards is just out there. He's just, he's just giving her hell. <laughs> don't know if Bring it's yes. true. <laughs> Bring yes. I, I'll, I'll knock it up. Yeah. <laughs> Taking it literally. I don't know if this Nick Young guy is accurate, but he, uh, like I said, he recently went on a podcast or a TV show or something and said that uh, Anthony Edwards has produced three children so far this summer. Man, I don't know how some of you do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's good to have an NBA max contract if you, if you do knock up three, yeah, three women. I mean, even with all the money in the world, though. It's exhausting. <laughs> and there goes a lot of that money. Boom, boom, boom. Now are they counting yeah. the one that he are they counting the one that he had in the spring? I don't know exactly, okay. Brad. You have to ask Nick Young from <laughs> right. whatever show he was on. I mean, speaking of Sean Kemp, I mean, isn't that why Sean Kemp signed that deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers? Was because he needed every damn he needed, yeah, That's right. Well, and that's part of the reason I think, hate to go down this road, but why Adrian Peterson keeps signing with teams. Well, yeah. <laughs> he needs the money. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of damn. I don't know anything about this kind of stuff, thankfully. I don't have child payments. Uh, I haven't gotten myself involved in that yet, and, and odds are it, it won't happen. I'm firing blanks like a bitch at this point in my life, but uh, that's a lot of money leaving yeah. every month or however it works. Good Lord. But that's the story I heard. Some of you are going, who's Sean Kemp? Played in the NBA years ago with the Seattle Supersonics. He and Gary Payton were just this outstanding kind of thunder and lightning combination. And, and suddenly, Sean Kemp, who had all this success in Seattle, he signed a deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers, and it wasn't like he was jumping onto a team that was headed for the final finals. It was, why would he sign with Cleveland? Well, the story I heard was this poor bastard had so many kids running around, 
He needed every possible dime he could get his hands on, and the Cavaliers offered him a little bit more money. Yeah. The child support payments falling out of his pockets. Ah, well. I mean, Anthony Edwards, he's giving her hell. He's going to see... Well, it's more impressive because he really hasn't had much of an off season. I mean, he's getting ready for the Olympics now. Right. Oh, it doesn't take that much time to make a baby. No, I guess not. (laughs) I forgot about the Olympics. That's right. That's coming up. That's coming up. Oh. Oh, uh, Caitlin Clark. She's still doing her thing. She made WNBA history. Yesterday over the weekend, she became the first rookie to mess around and get a triple double. Honestly, I feel like we played a really good game, and I, like you know, you don't get it without your teammates finishing baskets for you. So pretty cool. And obviously, this franchise has had a lot of really great players. So to be a part of that and to come here was you know a perfect perfect place for me. So uh, I'm just very lucky and fortunate. All right, there you go. I hear you, Caitlin Clark. Good Jerry. thing she's not on the Olympic team. She's not. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> Um, I, I for, uh, don't stir that up. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that alone. Yeah, it's just. And the reasoning again there was uh, I forget um, because no, uh, she's not, not one of the best player. She's not one of the best players. No, 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 no. There was a there was a different reasoning when we first brought it up. Oh, well, oh. they were originally they were afraid fans would revolt. Oh, yes. that's right. They, they were afraid her fans would revolt because she wouldn't be playing enough. Yeah, if she wasn't right. on the floor all forty-eight right, yeah. minutes, yes, right, fans right. would burn down uh, they, they Olympic headquarters or something. Quickly. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Josh mentioned this in his news report: the, the sad news coming out of the Minnesota Vikings camp, where one, right. of, their, one of their rookie players. Uh, died in a car wreck over the weekend. They're only 24 years old, a kid by the name of Kyrie Jackson. That's that's just a friggin' tragedy. Awful. The last couple times that I've seen any, either one of them, they've all been together. It was kind of like that in high school. All of these young men have very unique stories. They definitely show what can be achieved if you stick to it. As long as you keep pushing and do it the wise way, you're going to turn out fine. I mean, it was joyous to see these three together, man, laughing, joking, living life, and knowing that ultimately it was all going to work out in the end. They're gone, but never forget. Is that a friend of uh, Kyrie Jackson's? High school coach. High school coach, okay. Yeah. And the, the other kids that died in the car wreck were, were a couple, they were his high school football teammates? Yes, they were. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Ah. Yeah, it's very, very sad. That's just brutal. Totally unnecessary. Josh, like I said, brought it up in his news report, I guess, uh, Kyrie Jackson rookie cornerback um, was in a passenger seat. They were hit by some lady. There may be liquor involved. So he and two of his friends all died in the vehicle. There are charges possibly pending. Oh, yeah. Just an absolute disaster. Yeah. Damn disaster. In lighter news. So the Nathan's Hot Dog Showdown on Independence Day wasn't the same without Joey Chestnut. You know, he found a cool event to take Nathan's place. He was at a charity event eating wieners against the Marines to raise money for military families. Uh, from what I read, that was a fun deal. But Nathan still went forward with their deal. And I don't know who ate how many hot dogs. Who cares? The best video to come out of this year's Nathan's deal was the dude who sprayed puke all over the state. Oh, that guy. was absolutely <laughs> awesome stuff. He couldn't stop. He, he couldn't oh, stop. my he, God. I, I can't play the music behind it, but he kind of did it on beat almost. Oh, if you, if you no. pay attention and, and listen to it, he kind of does it. You'll, you'll hear the crowd go nuts right oh. every time he throws up. <laughs> He's just oh, spraying. God. Yeah. Oh, God. And it wasn't hot dog meat. Well, we'll tell lemon. you. Oh, yes. you. You can play the audio, and then we can uh, uh, give you the rest of the information, if you like. Oh, my computer's not working. Let's try this. <laughs> oh! Ladies and gentlemen, Badlands Booker, a new world record. <laughs> okay, that's not vomiting, is 20- it? No, that was Badlands Booker when they put the mic in front of him trying to get a reaction. The guy oh. won, and that's all he has to say. Okay. And then here comes the vomit. 21 seconds, a new world record. Oh, it's one time. Two. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, 
I watched this video 17 or 18 <laughs> times in a row. <laughs> so this is what it was. It, it wasn't oh. wieners. It wasn't wieners. When they, they take a break from eating hot dogs at this deal and they have a lemonade chugging contest. Folks, see if they can, how quickly they can chug a gallon of lemonade. That's really oh, good for acid reflux. Yeah, no oh, kidding. Gosh. So one of the contestants couldn't hold all that lemonade down after it was over, and he just projectile vomited multiple times. You heard the crowd. He must have been out of it, because wouldn't you turn away? I mean, like, even the first time, maybe the first time he's shocked, but then you realize, oh, this is going to happen multiple times. I think I'd turn away. (laughs) I also, Josh, I don't understand why the guy remained in one place. Unless he was just shocked or something. Maybe it was all part of the show. It could have been. I don't know. That's taking one for the team. Because he stood, he stood center stage, facing the crowd, just and all spraying. over himself. Yes. Oh, it's like God. he didn't make any effort to it's bend weird. over or anything. I'm going to go ahead with a conspiracy theory now, oh. and I'm going to say that this guy, you know, might have the skills to do that on command. I knew someone who did, and he was a rock star in sixth grade. And he told, he told the organizers, look. I can I can shoot vomit all over the place if you want to just because no one's talking about this event anymore because chestnuts at any rate the look on the guy's face and the crowd reaction was so much fun I only wish I'd have been watching live <laughs> Here's the winner of the actual hot dog eating contest And the winner is Patrick Bertoletti Chicago Illinois It was all focused today no mohawk just hot water, and uh, I wasn't going to stop eating until the job was done. Got to get that job done. Okay. Oh, and I thought he had like t- 20 uh, less wieners than you might expect from Joey Chestnut, somewhere around there. So oh. not, not quite the same athleticism. Okay. <laughs> Listeners are telling me that the dude who was spraying lemonade vomit all over town, he, he goes by the name of Air Soft Fatty. I'll go along with yeah, it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Airsoft fatty. Um, yes, yeah, skitty Jesus. I, re- I agree with you. He said it. Skitty Jesus, when watching that, was reminded of the movie Stand By Me when the pie eating contest oh, sure. goes to hell in a handbasket. Okay, now speaking of Joey Chestnut, today or tonight, somewheres, I'm not sure, Chestnut will attempt to eat 200 boneless wings at Buffalo Wild Wings. Dana's favorite kind of wing. <laughs> Stop that. Oh, man. That's, That's a lot so of wings. so many. God. Oh, my gosh. The pain. The pain you would be in. I don't know where this is happening or when, but it's today somewhere she's going to try to. What's your record, Dana? Oh, wings in the sitting? I've probably over 50. Oh, my God. How long did that take you? Um, hmm, Half hour, maybe. They used to do. Wow. Uh, they used to That's do buckets. Impressive. They used to do buckets of twenty-five at this bar I would frequent, and I remember one time I did put down two buckets. Yeah, oh, that is impressive. Sh- one of the craziest things I ever watched in my life was back when we used to play beer league softball. And yes, you're probably going to text about you know how many division titles. It was like 11, 12, 13 <laughs> uh, division titles. Uh, two of my teammates. One is very well known around here. Um, a good friend of mine, Curtis. Curtis and another pal of mine, Big Phil, decided to go head-to-head. No time limit. Just eat as many wings as you can, and we'll decide an all-time champion. Both of them big eaters. Both of them would argue on and off about who was the bigger. So we finally said, Let, let's settle this. Both of you sit down at this. This is a bar that sponsored our softball team. Um, sit down and see how many you can wipe out. Uh, big Phil won the competition. Uh, by a final of 52 to 48, I think, was the uh, final total wings consumed. I think they probably were sitting there about a half hour or 45. Um, It was just insane, kind of disgusting. I bet. But my favorite part of the story was hearing about how they felt the next day. Uh, (laughs) Curtis Curtis didn't even bother getting out of bed and attempting to go to work. He was... (laughs) Absolutely. He said he, he said it felt like he was strapped down in bed. He physically could not. Phil did rise the next morning. Big Phil did get up to go to work the next day, but he said it was worse than any hangover he ever had. Oh. Just I can just imagine the, the salt just pouring out of your, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're just sweating it out, basically. 
And you stink like buffalo sauce for days. Oh, God. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> Who's been following the Tour de French so far? Anybody dialed into this? Zero. No. no. Sorry. No reason to apologize, Brad Ryder. I wouldn't watch if I was in the French. You know what I mean? I would. You could put me in the town where it was happening, and I'd find something better to do than bicycle racing. Um, I get cute side story. Uh, one of the racers there, uh, a fella uh, by the name of Julian Bernard, was fined by the folks who run the Tour de French because he stopped his bicycle to kiss his wife, who was on the side of the road. Kind of a setup. Well, that's not fair. Stopped to kiss his wife. He was fined. The governing body said that he had engaged in, quote, unseemly or inappropriate behavior during the race that damages the image of the sport. Oh, come on. That's so stupid. Take yourself more seriously. <laughs> Showing some affection to his wife. His wife must be something to look at one way or another. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she is. If it was damaging to the image of the sport. I don't know. I think I'd want that image for the support. Yeah. For the support if I was them. Was she, uh, as you would call it, was she a hot mama? She was a fly honey. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you were a fly Hot honey. mama, too. I'll give you further uh, Tour de French updates if I can. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> Keep us posted daily. It's a, it's a good thing he didn't pump out three kids this summer. What would they have done to him? <laughs> Man. Oh, what else is going on around here? We got some sports history for you. What is it today? July the 8th, 20 plus 2. 135 years ago. Oh, they say here it was 1889. The last bare-knuckle world heavyweight boxing championship was fought. Mm. And does everyone remember the old-timey name that comes up whenever you talk about he was the greatest bare knuckle champion of all. Is anyone? No. John L. Sullivan. Oh, John L. Sullivan. Okay. That's the one that comes yep. to mind. Yeah. He won the fight. Again, this was the last ever world heavyweight bare knuckle boxing championship. Although, I, don't I see it advertised nowadays? I don't know if I, I've I seen don't. it. Someone, someone looked that up. I swear to God, it, it's going on in some form these days. But anyway, John L. Sullivan won that fight in a 75-round match. Oh, God. Uh, it's exhausting. Uh, yeah. Does anyone have any idea how long a round was in 1889? I mean, if it was two minutes, you're there for... Um, shortly thereafter, bare-knuckle fighting was banned to cut down on broken hands. Well, what about... Yeah. Faces and <laughs> orbital bones? Orbital, yes. Teeth and, and eye sockets. 75 rounds he fought. Yeah, someone, can anyone, uh, is, everyone, is anyone's computer working? Yeah. Yeah. I swear to God, there's some kind of bare knuckle action happening. Uh, and someone, I'm going to get a text now on knuckle action. I, I swear, <laughs> I, I, I know I I swear yeah, there is a, a bare knuckle fighting championship. <laughs> There is. Yeah, yeah the BKFC. The yeah, Ooh, KFC. I love that. BKFC. <laughs> is this a Dana Rouser? What's his name again? Dana, Dana White. White. Is this a Dana... Uh... Now, he does the slap fighting okay, but along I mean, with the MMA, obviously. Okay, but he, he has nothing to do with bare knuckle? Yeah, there's there's something going on on July 12th, it looks like. Where? Oh, okay. Uh, pay-per-view? Yeah. Oh, they got men's and women's it divisions. streams on the BKFC app. You might as well take the gloves off of who's the uh, internet kid again that's going to uh, pat, patty cake with uh, Mike Tyson. Uh, yeah, Jake Paul. Logan Paul. Jake yeah, Paul. you might as well take the gloves off of those two guys. They're not going to try to do any damage to each other anyway. And that they don't throw as many punches when they don't have gloves on. I bet not. I bet not. Probably not. And also, it was 14 years ago today during an ESPN. <laughs> I remember this so, so well. It was so silly. Uh, f hard to believe it was 14 years ago when LeBron James did his ESPN primetime oh, special. Oh, God. <laughs> Taking my talents to Miami. That was so douchey. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Wasn't that just... It was God. just so awful. And they had, like, a bunch of charity kids behind him for some reason, yeah, too. Yeah, so embarrassing. <laughs> 
and hasn't he admitted not that long ago? He did. Yeah. yeah. That was stupid. I was yeah. young and oh god. Right. Yeah, that was not a smart thing. My God. <laughs> so there you friggin' go. Oh. All right, Randy Shaver. So tomorrow morning, you are off uh, on a road. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm working. Oh, no, no. But at, at some point, I'm, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, to be exact, you will be on air with us tomorrow morning. Yep. But yep. then you are he- heading out on a road trip with the wife. We are. Okay. Yep. And you'll give us hints. When we talk to you on Wednesday, you're going to ask us to guess where you're at. I think you did that last year, and that was kind of fun. I'll be uh, gone, uh, uh, so it'll be like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. Okay. Where do you but, oh, but, it, can't, this, it can't be that long of a road trip. You can't be going very far. No, no you're right. No, no, that's a very good deduction, oh. Brad. That, that's very good. Brad, see that Brad's a, he's a professor. <laughs> he is. He's learning. Yeah. It, He's an educated man. Right away, he figured, well, it can't be that friggin' far away. Right. Uh, Josh, knowing Randy Shaver the way you do, what would you suppose is the last destination he has in mind? Well, State Fair comes to mind. <laughs> <obviously>. <laughs> Maybe he'd go now, you know, when there's nobody around. I drive by it now. Yeah. yeah. He's not going to the fairgrounds. <laughs> I, we saw him at his gala, I'd say a gym. I oh. wouldn't expect to see him at a gym. <laughs> because he could yes. use a workout? <laughs> yes, thanks, Josh. Uh, you're not going, oh, oh, uh, I guarantee he's not going to Chris Carter's house. No. Um, <laughs> oh God. I bet a Culver's Like I a, would be invited to Chris Carter's house. A Culver's would be a good guess. I bet oh, he goes yes. to a Culver's Are you truck. going to, I'm going to guess right now. Are you going to visit the original Culver's? <laughs> I am not. <sighs> is that in Wisconsin? Would that be the first one? I bet so, yeah. Uh, I'm sure it is, yeah. That's where Culver's I've, originated, right? I've got a guess. You want to guess right already? What, yeah. Already? Already? Yeah. This sounds like dad fights. You're going to lose. Well, I, no, I, well, no, I don't lose dad fights, first of all. But, <laughs> well, I, I, but, I, but I do have a guess. So your your oldest son is in Iowa. So I think what you're going to do is I think you're going to drive through <laughs> Iowa, stop and see them, and then go down to Missouri, maybe either go like through the Ozarks or maybe go to Branson. Do you want to tell him if he's correct or incorrect? Uh, you, you are somewhat correct. First stop, uh, Red Door Clinic. Uh, head down to Iowa. You uh, are somewhat correct, but not completely. No. Okay. okay. That's pretty good work, though, on your part, Brad Ryder. Look at the big brain on Brad. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've been to the Ozarks, and it's boring. So the answer is I'm, I'm not going okay. there. The Ozarks are boring. I was trying to think boring. of places like by Iowa that might be interesting to go. <laughs> oh, there's not many of those. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll finger this out on Wednesday. Sounds good. We'll figure it out. Thanks, Brad Ryder and Randy Shaver. You bet. We'll right, talk to you guys soon. Text us right now, right now, if you're feeling funny and you'd like to ask a doctor about your problem. The text number is 651-989-9393. Dr. P. Jesus is in next on the half Ass Morning Show. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Are you ready to beat the heat this summer? Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is here to help you say goodbye to sweltering heat and hello to ultimate comfort. Ashley, what specials do they have going on this month? Celebrate Christmas in July with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get huge savings with $1,776 off a new multi-head ductless system. Visit standardheating.com to discover all the goodies in Santa's bag. Former Navy SEAL Mike Ritland keeps it real on the Mike Drop Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Mitch Aguiar. Rest is definitely important, and I think a lot of people overlook rest. I've definitely taken time off when I get injuries. If you're training while you're injured and you're you're not doing things correctly, I think it's better to just kind of sit out, heal. And I've done that several times where I've, I've had to take time off, and then when I come back, people are like, you got better. Mike Drop. Raw. Unfiltered, intellectually sound, wherever you listen. Dr. P. Jesus. The 93X Half Assed Morning Show. Well, I'll be damned. He's back. Dr. P. Jesus. Dr. James Parnell is here in studio, and he's able to go ahead and help you out. If you have an issue with your fragile health, Text in if you have a question, 651-989-9393, and uh, by God, we'll get underway. Dr. P., how was your Independence Day? It was uh, very independent. 
It was good. <laughs> That's uh, my favorite type of yeah. day, really. If you can Honestly. Be, right. Do uh, you have to sew any fingers back on or no, anything like that? No, no, I was off. I was uh, making my... Mickey, well, I was in Ohio with family. Very mm-hmm. exciting Ohio, as always. Have you had to deal with fireworks-related injuries? Oh, God. Hmm. Over your career? You know, I never really have, amazingly. Um, Sewing a thumb back where it uh, used to be and things like that? No. I mean, I, didn't, I haven't done that much work in the emergency room. Back in residency, we would uh, moonlight in the emergency room, but we would do sort of, they called it the fast track area, which was more the urgent care type thing. So mm-hmm. if people had fingers blown off, they would go to the emergency room part if they slice their fingers open which often happens on holidays um you know from cooking basically sure i sewed up a lot of fingers but they weren't blown up thankfully. if you blew your fingers off and you they can't sew them back on yeah what would you have sewed on in their place <laughs> <laughs> uh huh finger sausages or something like yeah, that whatever you want yeah. i mean I, I would uh, want like hmm. kind of a Swiss Army knife on my oh. hand, you know, of, oh. of different tools. Yeah, some Captain Hook type thing. Well, you can go That's multiple it. different items, right? So bottle opener. Whatever you want, yeah. yeah. You'd be like a Swiss Army. You a, could A big old spoon so you could sweep food into your yap. Yeah. Wow, that's a really good idea. Yeah, uh, maybe, I like that. Maybe a pen or pencil and one. Vibrator. Uh, yep. Uh-huh, <laughs> need that, need Big that. floppy you, one. To massage your back, I assume, right? Uh, not mine, but... Well, we were more mm. thinking vagina, but go ahead. Oh, yeah. hey. <laughs> no, that's, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one a little bit. We had a story earlier in the stupid news about a dude who was showing off at a 4th of July party, and he put a damn, some kind of big-ass firecracker up on top of his head, showing off, having fun. And it killed him dead. That's it's a, a terrible thing. Yeah. That's a pretty bad story. <laughs> it's a bad story. God. And yeah. they even in the story, they even mentioned the cleanup oh. Oh, was something to what? see. Yeah, I don't know why they put that in. I mean, <laughs> yeah, why? I'm not going to mm-hmm. describe. You can look it up if you want. Disgusting. I, I, I was saying earlier, maybe just to scare people or shock people into not putting on a top hat with an explosive on top of that. <laughs> Was it supposed? Like, was it supposed to look cool? That's in some what way? he was showing off. Yeah, yeah we don't like, know. Check don't, it out. We don't know exactly what motivated him, but like Josh said, he put a he put a little uh, Uncle Sam top hat on first. You know, <laughs> yay America! And then he put the firecracker up on top. Boom! And it, uh, and it killed him dead. And his wife yeah. was there watching too. Yeah, there was a crowd of people. That's who he was showing off for. Yeah, you talk about or you hear about those Darwin Awards, and that would definitely be one. Oh yeah. God. Uh, mm-hmm. This person, Dr. P, as we get to our first medical question, woke up this weekend with a hardcore case of vertigo. Three hours it lasted. Haven't quite felt great since. Feel a little foggy. Anything I should be concerned about going forward? Um... So th- it, did they say it's gone? or they, they said they, they're feeling foggy still. Okay, but it was basically three hours. So they're not feeling 100% at this point. Yeah, I mean, there's... Um, so I per- have had a similar experience, yeah. and I can share uh, my, my story Please after uh, the professional says uh, his piece. Sure, so vertigo, you know, is, is basically the, the sense of the room spinning, um, you know, almost like a seasickness feeling. It can mean a number of different things. We There's always a difficulty when... People say they're dizzy or have vertigo. We have to kind of clarify, do they mean they're lightheaded or they might pass out versus actual dizziness mm-hmm. or ver- vertigo? But we'll take it. Take this as vertigo. Um, if it comes on out of nowhere and it's just sort of constant, I would say probably the, the most common thing would be sort of a, a viral labyrinthitis, it's called, where you've got inflammation or a viral infection of the inner ear. The more common thing we see is vertigo that's... Um, called benign positional vertigo, but that's brought on by these little um, calcium uh, crystals that are in the inner inner ear that move around as part of the normal system, but if they get in the wrong spot, basically, if you turn your head, you will, these things move around and they give you a sense of dizziness, but that's usually just with turning your head, looking up and down. So if it's really acute, goes on for hours without, you know, moving your head or doing anything, it's probably that... um, like a viral labyrinthitis, and it can last for days, but, I mean, it could just be, I suppose, something that lasts for part of a day, but then you would usually just kind of feel washed out, uh, and it would, it would go away on its own. I had that. Uh, and it, went, it lasted for about a week, Dr. P., but the, yeah. the tests they do for it at the doctor are so silly to me because they just, like, make you kind of just move your head to the right or to the left, like, yep. really fast. I just mm-hmm. felt kind of dumb 
sitting yeah. there doing that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are there's specific names for those tests, but it, it, you do those to essentially try to provoke that benign positional vertigo. Mm -hmm. But it is, yeah, it's sort of looking one direction off to the right, turning your head quickly, then looking up, then laying back. And if it's, if it's that benign positional vertigo, we can usually bring that on. That one's pretty easy to treat by honestly doing those maneuvers. It sort of, uh, they talk about it relocates those little particles back to the correct spots in the inner ear. So there's a few different things that, uh, yep. that are vertigo-like. Yep. Um, when I had that sensation, um, and now for the, I had it and I lost it. I cannot think of the diagnosis, but it was something to do with my salt intake. Um, Damn, and now I, I can't think of... It wasn't um, any of the... Uh, yeah, that w the other one would be something called Meniere's disease. That, no, that wasn't... <clears throat> I, that might have been it. At any rate, yeah. I will... Elephantitis, maybe? What was that? Elephantitis. Elephantitis <laughs> of the... Uh, ah, Christ, maybe... maybe it, I don't, it wasn't Meniere's. Okay. But anyway, it was... I woke up, and I felt like I was on a friggin' amusement park mm -hmm. ride. And I thought it was a stroke. Um, and then, of course... I thought, well, the next likely thing might have been vertigo. vertigo. It was similar, but I, I, what I remember is they told me it had something to do with the amount of salt I was taking into my body, and again, I can't think of the damn term, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you never do know. Right, it, it can be a quite a few different things, mm -hmm. uh, and, and stroke is something that can cause it. That's unusual, I would say. Oh, I was um, convinced, yeah. And that Meniere's disease, and the only reason I mention that is because it has to do with um, a change in the amount of fluid in those inner ear semicircular canals. And um, basically, one of the treatments for that is a diuretic that gets rid of fluid and salt. So, um, yeah. But it, but it can be complicated to figure out. If it's, get, if it's going away, you know, that's fine. If you're getting worse, then obviously... You don't what if so they said they're feeling foggy, uh, not 100%. Probably it's just, probably it's a viral thing, I would think. Um, you know, and that's going to take days, but hopefully you're getting slowly better each day. Um, so so not, ride, nothing to be too concerned about, you're saying? No, I think riding it out. But um, if, it's, if it's getting worse again, then absolutely being seen. Uh, while we're uh, in the, uh, you know, hanging out here in the ear canal, here's a listener whose right ear has been plugged for a couple of weeks. Oh, oh. she is. It doesn't sound like he wants or he or she wants to go see a professional, which, of course, we would advise, because he or she say, is there any way a home, is there a home solution to fix a plugged ear? Oh, uh, I hate that. That's the worst. Yeah, I mean. Brett, everything sounds like this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah what? everything sounds like, at least in one ear. It sounds just like this. <laughs> when I've had really bad colds and such, sometimes one of my ears will quit on me. Uh, and that is that is what it sounds like. It's uh, it, it drives you nuts. Okay, plug deer. Yeah. For so there's, I mean, there can be a number of reasons for that too. One, if you get a cold or something, then that's um, basically you have it's called eustachian tube dysfunction. So the little um, it, we have our you have the ear canal, you have the ear drum. On the other side of that is the middle ear, where um, there should you know the bones of the ear live, and there's just uh, air. But you can get some fluid in there and the way that system drains is through the eustachian tube that goes to the back of your throat. If that gets blocked up when you have a cold, you can get a sense of a plugged ear. Mm -hmm. The most common thing would be wax that's just impacted. Oh. And the more people try to work on that with a Q-tip, it often just jams it in there. Um, there are over-the-counter uh, things that you can get to basically just sort of, um, you, you can use drops that help dissolve wax, and those just go in there, and if you hear them bubbling, that's a good sign that there's wax. Um, I'd go to an ear lady, and she mentioned olive oil. Oh. I mean, olive oil is... Whatever, basic, Popeye, Brutus, yeah. whoever you get. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who's ever willing to dig in? <laughs> those drops that you get over the counter are essentially an oil component and then like a hydrogen peroxide. So it. You know what it, else I found out? If you're prescribed it, and she mentioned this... I think I might have brought this up on the air. Because the doctor mentioned this too. Uh, the stuff I bought, it was like 90 bucks, right? These drops they gave oh, you. Oh, yeah. They have the exact same thing at PetSmart. <laughs> and I think it was like $8. Because oh, okay. uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I Google, I, you know, I was just curious. I'm like, it all, it had all these things in there, these big words and different things. It's in it. I looked it up. I'm like, my God, it's on the shelves at PetSmart. Uh, one for the dog, well one I, for me. What did they want for it over at PetSmart? It was like 8 bucks oh. or something. Uh, it's quite possible, yeah. And I asked the, you know, the doctor about it, and she's like, yeah, she's like, sometimes. I'll mention that it's <laughs> it's the same thing. They just if, package it different. If so, it is a wax problem, you know, we we always have people who who 
love that candle bit. Um, she said bad things about this, that you're late. You light the thing, yeah. the yeah, cone-shaped she, thing, you I've stuff it in your ear. Yeah. I, I tried it years ago. and it Did it pre- feel good? It looks like it feels good. It doesn't feel, it just feels like you have something in your ear. Oh, it looks like a, like relieving. When no, it's yeah. no, I, I didn't feel that. We tried, we, you know, we had a few beers and tried it out on each other. <laughs> one, one, uh, yeah. it, it, little it, for the nipple, little for the ear. Right. <laughs> I, it, I did, it did pr- produce something. Yeah, but not as impressive and effective as you might think. That was my experience. Yeah, my understanding is that doesn't really work. Okay, I, I have read about it, but yeah. So you, there's yeah, over-the-counter- this she was an expert, right? Yeah, there's over the counter drops. Um, there are over the counter. You know, there's basically almost like a, a low um, velocity rinse thing you could use. But if it's really bad, you you do need to go into the doctor. I mean, honestly, in primary care. That's on the top ten list of things that we see where we got to dig wax out of people's ears. Um, yeah. 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 Slightly below below average, Jesus said, uh, sometimes when sneezing, I get terrible pain in my gooch. Oh. The internet says it's a hernia. Should I be concerned? No kidding. The gooch, huh? We're talking about the perennium, the taint? That's oh. my, that's that my the interpretation okay. of the gooch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God dang. Huh. Uh, sneezing? Sneezing, yeah. Terrible pain in the gooch, if I didn't say so already. <laughs> yes. <The> where? <laughs> in the gooch. Are you sitting on your car keys when you sneeze? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird... Are you annoying a coworker where every time you sneeze they punch you right in the gooch? Yeah, I mean that's a long that's a long ways uh, apart there. The uh, the sneeze right, box you and tighten the... up all those muscles and whatnot. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't think that my uh, my nose and throat you know sneeze box would uh, ever have an effect on. Well, they, by we, undercarriage. Yeah, I mean, well, you can you, cough yourself a hernia, right? right? I you mean, can it's just down there. That I don't. There's not really a down where. I'm sorry. Down in the down in the gooch. The gooch, yes. That sounds like a radio guy, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nick and the gooch. <laughs> Did, didn't we work with a guy named? No, the, you did. No, yeah, gosh, we did. No. Didn't we? I couldn't stand the guy. Was it Gooch? Yeah. That's that's, it, if, if it wasn't, it was really close. Yeah, because I bailed him out of jail. Yeah. You, yeah. We, you bailed the Gooch out of jail? I did, yeah. <laughs> that's should've, right. Should've Boy, that was a him. long time ago. You should have left him in there. <laughs> uh, so, uh, well, any, anytime you sneeze or cough, it, it's, a, um, it's the equivalent of a Valsalva maneuver, which is, you know, basically if you close your throat off and you bear down just like you would to try to push something out of you like a baby... Uh, or something else um, that increases pressure, and so yeah, it can cause a hernia. It's just there. There's not really. Uh, I've never heard of a hernia in that area. Uh, was this a guy? Do we know? Uh, yes. I mean, slightly below below average. Jesus. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, like, maybe it's just an ingrown hair yeah, or, or a pimple or down a, there or something or a muscle strain down there. Um, I mean, you know, always with guys, the prostate because it is down there. But I've that would be unusual. Um, you know, it would take a lot more questions and a physical exam trying to figure if there's something else you going just on down there. See his gooch. Yeah, you yeah. Oh, for God's sake, I do. Well, yeah. Good luck with the uh, with the uh, t- the taint. Uh, th- this is uh, brutal right here. What it do, Jesus? Day eight of no poop. Oh, I can uh, tell you what it don't. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Day eight. That's awful. Mm. Is there any serious health risk? Well, he says here to holding in the mother load. What are you, what are you talking about? What, what are you, I not... think he just means, like, is there a health risk that it's been held in? I, okay. I'm well, sure it's not by choice. Yeah, please. Uh, if you have the chance, well, let, it, let it go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess I'm not exactly sure how long you can go before. What's your record, Josh, with your constipation problems? Boy, I don't know. That's a good question. Certainly several days. Several. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I'm up to eight days. I'm trying to remember the time I had to go get it. Oh. How long that was. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a long time. And obviously, if you're still continuing to eat, then the stuff's not going anywhere. And, yeah, I, I mean, that's amazing that it would go on that long. So something's obviously very wrong, like an obstruction usually. But it, it, typically, if you truly have an obstruction in your small intestine or large intestine, you're going to start vomiting and be quite sick um you i mean he's got to do something about it so at that point is it too late for an enema and stuff like that you're backed uh, up eight days i mean i would 
I think you should try it for sure. I'll um, tell you what, I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but there was a, a desperation where I didn't care anymore. Yeah. I'll do whatever. Yeah, usually if it's really bad, you've got to work on stuff from above and below. So um, the safest stuff is Miralax, which is essentially a powder that you mix in either water or some other liquid, and you oh, drink yeah. it, and it carries water down through the colon. It can help things move. But, yeah, then some sort of um, Fleet's enema, which is – like an oily substance that oh uh, but you know that's the simplest over-the-counter thing to buy um man that sounds but yeah brutal. what uh, about a stool softener i mean uh, stool softeners you know work uh something like colace it's called which is i don't think it's gonna work at that point i mean i guess you could try it coffee uh, long leaf chewing tobacco uh, <laughs> yeah so there you go yeah. when i when i had the weird the disease thing a couple weeks ago and i you know sick I, I saw the best doctor I've ever seen. Um, you know, I've, ne- I've, ne- I've never seen Dr. P. Oh, I'm okay. No. <laughs> never professionally. <laughs> Just casually. I mean, we've hung out before. You get me a ride in your Mustang. I did, I did. But uh, so, yeah, I, by, by far, best doctor I've ever seen. That's cool. And he had mentioned, you know, he was asking me about it, and uh, he told me two capfuls of Miralax a day, which I mix with some Gatorade, mm. been awesome. Nice. Yeah, changed my life. I mean, it's good stuff. It, it's oh. uh, it's safe, um, you know, especially in that's a small amount of it. It really does just carry more water down through the colon. There's things, you know, X-Lax um, is a, uh, a stimulant laxative, um, which kind of stimulates your gut to do things. And if you keep using that, it can have some pretty profound problems later. Yeah, doesn't it, your body forget how to do it on its own? Basically, yeah. No yep. way. Um, and if even, you use that, uh, like a laxative? Yeah, right. It's not good to use long term, but Miralax is quite safe. Um, I think I'd go ahead with uh, beech nut, long leaf chewing tobacco, <laughs> <laughs> a pot of coffee, just swallow it all down, and then uh, maybe just do jumping jacks. Yeah, see but, if something might shake loose. But some something. Look medic- out below. Something's medically wrong. That's um, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. What it do? Jesus said it is at a point where he could go get it. I understand waiting to the last second. It's the same thing. But well, you got to go get it. I'd go, I'd go get it quicker. Yeah. Don't be afraid to get it. I read on the internet, go get it, and I, I still took a couple days because I thought I can't. Yeah. I had to go get it. Yeah, and it was shortly after I had to go get it. <laughs> That'd be hard to have to do. Here's a listener who said they didn't have a bowel movement for two, three days, and they realized they forgot uh, the, they were wearing a, a plug. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, that'll keep it in there. Mm-hmm. Whoops. They forgot they were wearing a yeah, you know, that'll keep it in there. Oh, my God. Where is the, There's a good text here. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Foundry Rat Jesus. Not me, he starts. Mm, sure. But a friend of mine moved back in with their parents. But not him. No. Mm-hmm. Ah. And ever since, she's, uh, she's had issues with coughing and phlegm that's been consistent since moving back. Oh, you caught something from the old folks, huh? The uh, laundry room is next to the bedroom. And it did flood before she got back. Could it be mold-related? Mm. That seems reasonable, doesn't mold it? Mold-related. So coughing and phlegm. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be. Um, absolutely, yeah. Um, Are your folks also coughing phlegm all over the household? Yeah. And by the way, when can we all come over for dinner? Because that <laughs> sounds, it sounds does fun. Sound fun. Yeah. Right, nothing better than hanging out with the parents. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you get water, you know, especially under flooring and stuff like that or um, up into drywall, uh, it, it is a great place for mold to, to just proliferate. Um, and if you didn't have any symptoms beforehand, um, it's quite possible. But it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty tough to address that. I guess trying to um, dis- determine whether there is mold is challenging because you got to start ripping stuff up and out um, Ooh, yuck oh uh, we, we sounds moved like a lot a house, of work yeah we moved to a house where we had to do that Ooh. yeah and whether that's i mean it, it, if you're going to do it i would put on a mask and uh you know lift up some floor tiles or take off some trim along the edge of a wall and if if you see black mold it's bad i mean i'm not sure most of us want to really deal with that because You've, you've really got to kill it and then take out all those surfaces and replace them. Um, so you don't, want, you don't want to just 
burn the place down <laughs> without knowing that that's going on. Mm -hmm. But if nothing else has changed, then that's possible. Um, the other thing would be, you know, could there be uh, other, other animals? I mean, is there dogs, cats oh, yeah. that have lived down there, even if it's been years ago? Um, uh, what if they're eating COVID? Like it's dessert. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't do that. We had a mold remediation company come out. It was really, really bad. Yeah. yeah. And uh, But the guy was so cool. I mean, he's like, you know, here's the thing. You're at a level where we got to tarp this thing. Oh, really? Jeez. But he said, and I, you're just at the level where I probably should tell the government about oh. whatever they got to tell the city. Mm. But he just told me how to do it and okay. said, you know, if you, he's like, if I do it, I have to let people know, but here's how to do it. It, it was awesome. He was so cool about yeah. it. Yeah. And they got rid of the mold? I got rid of the mold. You, you got rid of the mold. Just yeah. bleach. I the burned the house it. down. Yeah, I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> right. All the bleach. We got to take a break. We got Dr. P. Jesus with us. Text us, 651-989-9393. If you have a question, you got a concern about your health, uh, and he'll try to uh, get back to you when we return on the half Ass Morning Show. Hi, everybody. Hi. Dr. P. Jesus, welcome to the Half-Assed Morning Show. 93X. Yeah, that's what we're up to around here. We're jaw-jacking with our doctor friend, Dr. James Parnell, otherwise known as Dr. P. Jesus. 651-989-9393 is the telephone number. If you just want to try to get in a last-minute question for the man. Our listeners put your knowledge to the test. They do. Let's see if you can handle this one. Alrighty. A listener says, can you ask the doctor about candida or candida? Something to do with the tongue. They say I have to scrape my tongue on the regular. If I skip a day, it comes back. It comes right back, whatever it is. Do you know what the hell they're talking about? Yeah, I mean, can candida, is, candida. Uh, is probably the most common... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, beautiful. The most common yeast infection that we get uh, oh, no. on, well, mostly on our bodies. You, you can get it in your body, but, um, you know, so candida is often what causes, um, or variations of it cause jock itch, cause athlete's foot, really? cause vaginal yeast infections. Oh! <laughs> and you can get it in your mouth, too, though, um... You know, there you was an episode, I'm rewatching House. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. And a couple uh, episodes ago, there was a guy that had a, a yeast infection, a vaginal yeast infection in his mouth. They never were specific on how it got there. <laughs> well, I bet you could guess. But, how in I the mean, hell does that happen? But, I mean, it was, it was gross what was going on in his mouth. Oh. Yeah. I, I mean, it's the most common setting that people will get, especially extensive infections, in their mouth, as if you're immune compromised somehow. Oh, so if you're if you're and, sick, and I think or... that was part of what happened in the episode. Yeah, I mean, if you had, I mean, HIV would be the, the classic thing. Oh. Um, but you, if you are on chemotherapy or if you have an immune system condition, okay. uh, one of the things that can cause it is if you have asthma and you use a steroid inhaler, and you're what you're, one of the things you're supposed to do after you use that is to rinse out your mouth, and it's because basically. It's the steroid that you put, it's supposed to be breathed into your lungs. If it sits in your mouth, it can kind of affect the immune system uh, in your mouth, and you can get candida infection. Sometimes people just have weird-looking tongues, and they think that they have a, a candida infection, and they can do all sorts of scraping and well, stuff. Well, what is it that they're scraping off of their tongues? Well, I, they must think that they're scraping off, essentially, you know. Well, white, if you legitimately white, have it. White stuff. It's like, like a like, white funk? Yeah. They, so that, I mean, again, the same stuff you get between your toes if you have okay. a terrible um, uh, athlete's foot. Okay. Um, so, this individual says, I've tried vitamins and probiotics, and it does not help. Yeah, I mean, one thing would be really to, to go in and be seen to confirm, do you have do you have that? If you do, then there are either you can take um, pills um, of antifungal medications, but if you're concerned about being exposed to those through your whole body, sometimes there's a thing called uh, basically nystatin solution where you swish it around in your mouth and then you either spit it out or you can even swallow that. Yeah. And that's a way to get rid of true wow. fungus in the mouth but people i, I people, brush what ashley would call my ton <laughs> every day does that help does that do anything or is it i mean again normal if if everything's going normal in your with your immune system and you're not on an inhaled steroid and there's you shouldn't really end up with a um uh a candida infection in your mouth again sometimes people have 
people if you look at your own tongue in the mirror yeah you can start to be a bit freaked out because it changes quite a bit from day to day and even throughout the day people have a thing called geographic tongue where it almost looks like you've got some kind of a dermatologic condition um and some people just have sort of a white appearance to their taste buds and Mm -hmm. they just if you get obsessed with it you start kind of going nuts um, it's never crossed my mind once. I, I, I mean, used to yeah, have, either. have that. It's, oh, you can't see it past all the piercings now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just covered it with jewels. So um, it's the same stuff that causes jock itch and yeast infections, yeah. athletes. For, oh, God. So it would be, you know, I think if they think that's going on, it would be good to, I mean, you can go in. The doctor can essentially do a test, do a culture of it yeah. to see is it actually Does happening. it taste terrible? Um, I, uh, what does it taste like? I mean, that's a good question. I don't know that I've ever... Well, you, you I'll tell you think... what you can do right now. You could lick between my Your toes. toes. Oh, yeah. yeah, get in there, Dr. I bet D. you'll get a big mm. dose of that candida. A lot yeah. of people are saying... I've had athlete nice. sports since I was 13 years old. Go ahead, Cubby. A lot of people are saying if you cut down your sugar intake, that might help. That's no fun. I mean... You're, it, you're it, drinking that maple syrup with that <laughs> candida. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, I mean, yeast loves... You know, it loves... Um, uh, warm, dark, and it does uh, benefit from having some sugary type substance to to fuel it. But again, it, I guess it w- I would want to confirm that that's actually what's going on. Who wants to look between my toes to see if they can find any candida? Not it. I'd be no. happy to look. Get in there, yeah, Cubby. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look. <laughs> Get in I'm between. I'm not a professional. That little one on yeah. the end and the next one to it is pretty bad. <laughs> oh, it's pretty bad. Oh, boy. Uh, well, here could be our final final, uh, although we do have a few minutes. Um, oh, look at that. Nova Scotia. Right do you see yeah, the I uh, see a little bit of candy. Dr. P. Jesus here? <laughs> oh, here's one that even Cubby could help with, I'm sure. Uh, listener says, uh, oh, boy, his wife is about nine weeks pregnant. Well, they got a ways to go then, don't they? Um, this is their first baby. My wife struggles to eat some days, doesn't feel very good. Most days, what can I do to help? Do any certain foods or beverages help this? So she, she it, pregnant lady, not eating. So ha- presumably having nausea or something related not to early pregnancy. Well, yeah. well, I mean, you probably want a little more of a history, like maybe if you had the video, of the conception, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. The position actually helps determine background, you know, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. She's not feeling very good most days, and uh, she struggles to eat some days. Yeah. I, I mean, early pregnancy nausea and vomiting can be anywhere from mild to horrible. Um, and she's taking it out on him, I bet. Yeah, probably. Yeah. He so, walks in the room, get out of here. But there's, you there's women who have it so bad that they have to end up on with like a, a huge IV line in and getting Jeez. fluids every day oh, and boy. getting anti-nausea medicine. So I'm again, Yikes. I'm guessing that she's if she's not eating, she's probably feeling nauseous and having some vomiting. Um, I mean, you know, the sort of the same goes for if you're nauseous and vomiting from any reason, but small amounts of liquids more frequently, small amounts of food more frequently, mm-hmm. just to make sure you're not getting dehydrated and maintaining nutrition. Yeah. Um, uh, ginger is a thing that can help with um, early pregnancy nausea. That's pretty safe. What do you mean? I, the gal I used to know down there at Seville Club? <laughs> <laughs> right. She's, she's got all sorts of good advice. Ginger from Seville Club? Yeah, yeah. Nice. She's well known throughout the medical community. Josh, um, a listener wants to know, when you were looking at my feet, um, looking for Candida, did you see Toronto? Yes, uh, Steelers fan Jesus. I sent him a picture of your foot. And he asked me if I noticed Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the pregnant lady. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, uh, other than that, um, I mean, if, it, you know, a woman who's pregnant really obviously needs to maintain hydration and get nutrition in for herself right. and for the pregnancy. So it's the kind of thing that going in and, and talking to a doctor, because there's, I mean, there are some prescription medicines that could be used. Ideally, we try to avoid those in early pregnancy, but... Um, but yes, you know, small, that sucks. 
It does. It's got to be miserable. I right. I, yeah, I always thought that pregnant ladies just wiped out a a, a whole pizza and a, and, a, and a twelve pack of beer, and, and they'd keep asking for <laughs> it. Well, no, not not a, not. I guess not the beer. I thought pregnant ladies just ate the house uh, right out from under you. Yeah, my I, wife for each kid had different cravings, and then afterwards she wasn't interested. Huh. You know, like she just couldn't. She couldn't do it anymore. She had too much. What was your weirdest craving, Steve? Yeah. Uh, shoot, I'm trying to remember. So I I think she had said with. Uh, my stepson, her oldest, that it was like buffalo wings. Huh. And from Hooters, by nice. the way. Uh, Hooters. Really? Great wings yeah. at Hooters. <laughs> yeah, she uh, specifically at the uh, Hooters buffalo buffalo wings. And I, wow. I can't really remember what the other one, but each one it was something, and then she all of a sudden didn't want anymore. And then I know the, the common theme is abstinence, as her, as her husband. <laughs> right. I can tell you that. Uh, yeah. so. Well, well that's nice. got to be a hell of a deal, uh, uh, you know, uh, Good luck with the with the pregnant wife, and uh, take it slow. Go see a doctor, and uh, they'll straighten this action out for you. Fun size Jesus, who congratulations by the way. They just had their baby last week. Adorable. She sent in some photos of oh, very nice. many so fun cute. size Jesus. Yes, so super super cute. Uh, she said, uh, "Have her eat some dry cereal before she gets out of bed." Fun size Jesus said she was sick for about three months straight, lost a lot of uh, lots of weight, and that helped her at least get out of bed. Dry cereal. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> that's, I mean, it's a good idea. I mean, basically, you, you've got to get nutrition and fluids into you. Um, and again, if it's, if it's terrible, uh, there are times that women have to have pretty significant interventions, like an IV and all that. But it doesn't sound like it's anywhere near that. Um, good. Good. You know, I had one other thought on our uh, coughing and phlegmy person in the basement. Um, just, oh. you know, we talked about animals, but also just dust and dust mites, you know, a basement, especially if no one's lived down there. It's just been, uh, you know, storage and laundry room. You're just it could inhaling just be, dust could, mites could day be after incredibly day. incredibly dusty. So, uh, you know, there's a variety of things that could be causing symptoms down there. So, you, you know, it, hopefully it's not mold, but uh, if it is, then we know how to get a, get a hold of Josh because he can figure it out. He's a mold guy. Well, I, I met a mold guy. Metabol. We, we found a bunch in our shower the other day, too. Oh, That's kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, the, like, I thought it was, it's a, you know, it's a relatively new shower, and I thought it was like the grout from the wall coming down, you know? Uh-oh. It's the same color. And then uh, there was like uh. a couple of dyed things in the grout on the floor, and I thought, well, my wife, whatever product she uses must be causing it yeah. and uh so i showed it to one of the dudes working on the bathroom he's like no nah, that's mold bro ah, <laughs> like, oh, yuck man but you know what spray a little something on that and it goes away there you go all done good point all thanks done. for everything dr b you good to see you welcome back guys yes yeah, thank, yeah, thank you, you very man. much yeah. we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks always enjoy seeing you man uh we have the great pleasure of welcoming the newest members of the brother and sisterhood born on the fourth of july baby levi congrats to mom and to dad built like a house Hung like a mouse, Jesus. As I mentioned, we have a new member of the sisterhood, Little Miss Eloise, mini fun size Jesus. Uh, fun size Jesus, congrats to you and the husband. And happy belated 62nd to Pops Jesus from Northside Jesus. The 93X and FS Morning Show. 93 the 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Celebrate Christmas in July with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get huge savings with $1,776 off a new multi-head ductless system. Visit standardheating.com to discover all the goodies in Santa's bag.